coming up on this episode of The Brain Drain Show. Was born in London, but then, you know, kind of grew up in Texas at such a young age. Ended up coming back when I was like 13 or something like that. They thought I was there to trim in the mountain. Now we're gonna find another skater. And I remember my mom freaking out. Nah, I got Charizard and smoking's bad. If you want to stay longer, you can get an athlete visa. I was we get the mega bucks up. That's all they would pay for. I used to tie a sleeping bag on my backpack with shoelaces. Big up money more. Oh, he wants to go to the chicken shop for me. I'll buy you a meal. And I used to be like, yeah. That would be incredible if you just had like tater tots cooking. Uh, one guy wrote in a Big Mac box, gave it to the guy. He's preparing the burger and he didn't see it. And it went out and some kid got it. And he come back and was just like, what the? is this. I actually rode for roller snakes for like a little while. Yeah. Converse gave me an offer. iPath actually came back with a counter offer. I don't know, they remember that beef thing? He knew everything. Like the accountant escape. Like he don't give a f That's Andy Roy. Teaching kids to drop in. Oh, yeah, we're gonna go meet Costin. It was really surreal because I was like, he's not gonna know I'm just gonna be like, he's this weirdo. Shut up, go skate. People will see it. You'll inspire people. How did I get there? What did I do? Like, because I never learned any specific good trick or like do the hammer or like over it's never gonna happen and i was like please don't use my gappy tooth <laughs> first graphic please don't do that i will cry he was like what the f is turbo island burn the f***ing line that pushed a wheelie bin on it go out your film up go f***ing do street don't tell them what you're doing and make a part dude go skate but it was sick and i loved it i loved every part of it Good evening and welcome to another great episode of the Brain Drain Show with me, Ford Brookfield. Joined to my left is my one and only true friend, my true supporter. Some would say, I don't know where I was going to go with that. Tell him your name, Toby. It's Toby. And, <laughs> and joined to our left, I'm stoked to have him on. Harry um, Lintel. Harry Lintel. Yeah. 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 Thank studio, you. Please. It's nice to be here. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. Is that it? Are you done? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Done. Where are we starting from just at the beginning? Just straight from the, straight from the top. All, All right, right, well, before we do that, can we just talk about, this is going to be a bit nerdy. Um, so your board, your first pro board. Yeah, yeah. It came out on the, the deluxe 8.28 size. Yeah, yeah, the is blue it, eagle shape. So, right, okay. So that's that's what that's called, right? Yeah, did, yeah. Did you choose that shape? I did, yeah. Okay, because that's position. the one I've been riding for a long time. You love okay. that. I love it, but there's a few reasons for that, and this is going to be full, like, nerd <laughs> levels here. <laughs> Because it's got quite a short wheelbase. Yeah, it's, it's like super 14. short. It's like 14.1. Yeah. And normally the deluxe boards. Um, the normally like 14.25 and up. 14.25 and up. And then like, there's some Blue Eagles that go as short as like 13.9. Yeah. So they've, they've, they've introduced the, the True Fit mold ones now. But anyway, so I was riding your board for a long time and drilling the wheelbase back. Oh, really? No way. Inch because I'm short. And yeah, like yeah. shorter wheelbase works, mm. but like it was you, your board was on that. What's it called? The Blue Eagle. Yeah, it's like the Blue Eagle shape. Like if you buy the Blue Anti Hero Eight Five board, it's really similar. To oh, okay, that one. I think okay. it might be a little bit shorter than my one, but right, it's but super similar. But it's shrunk down for the eight point two eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay, so you actually chose that size and that board. Uh, yeah, the one that was eight five with the Plague Doctor on it. I chose the, that shape. Yeah, and then the eight. Two five one um was an old shape I used to ride. So it's I did kind of pick that one, but it was more the eight five one I picked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm on the the, the eight five thirteen seven five wheelbase one now. Oh well. They do those sick. real short ones. Yeah, wow. It's rad. Because yeah. it like it reacts like an eight inch board because of the short wheelbase. Yeah. But it's still got that stability and the control. Not that I have my, any fucking control on the skateboard, but you know, like when you do a tray flip, the, the front foot connecting, yeah, you get that a bit more with the eight point five. I always so find like uh, with short wheelbase, it's a lot easier to like get the snap, and especially with yeah. tray flips, just it, the, it for the board quicker. to come around. Well, it, that's yeah. it. It's, it's, it's like, the same uh, principle as ice skaters when they do that pir pirouette shit. <laughs> Where <laughs> are you going with this? Well, they make themselves smaller. Yeah, and, exactly. And that, and that so makes spin them spin quicker. faster, and that's yeah. exactly the same concept. Is that I was, I was just interested because that was your first board came out on that shape, wasn't it? Yeah, I actually um, I had a friend in um, fucking Berkeley called Simon Jensen. He rides for Crooked, and he put me onto it. He was like riding really, really short wheelbase, like oval shaped boards, mm -hmm. and um, I was still struggling like picking boards. Like I'd pick a board and 
it didn't feel right or it was too i don't know i couldn't skate it and i skated his one i tried it out at this diy and i was just like wow what the fuck is this this is so good it's just more What's responsive it? isn't it it just reacts quicker and yeah everything felt better and i was like what the hell and he was like yeah it's short wheelbase and then that's when i realized and i was like because i mean we, we, we talk about it well i talk about this quite a lot on here but like when boards started getting you know like everyone was riding 825 or 8125 825 it went up to eight and a half and eight seven five. Everyone's wheelbase is just grew with how wide the board was going. Yeah, yeah. So you end up having these boards that are like essentially street boards that have got wheelbases of vert boards. And, yeah. and, and to spin anything lengthways, it's just a lot harder. And yeah, that yeah. quarter of an inch makes a lot of difference. Anyway, that's it. Proper nerd out. No, no, it's true. I, I totally agree. There's actually, a, um, I don't know if uh, it's out yet, but um, Grimple Sticks, because uh, people talk about wheelbase all the time. And the people at Deluxe, I guess, are a bit annoyed by it all, like, fucking wheelbase, just skate it. Um, Grimple made a, fuck, how big is it? I think it's a six-foot wheelbase. Sick. And it's like the trucks are really far apart, and this thing <laughs> looks like a snowboard. I don't know if they're going to manufacture it and sell it, but I skated it. You can't ollie, you could, like, kick turn onto a handrail, it's that long. It, like, lifts fucking up that man. high. Like, when Wiga had the Enjoyer doing the back tail on the ledge. Oh, with it says board, Wiga Van With his surname, is like that. Yeah, yeah, it's literally like that, but you can, you can skate. But it. how wide? Uh, eight inch, or eight five. Fucking hell, so it's just like a massive long ski. Yeah, 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 yeah. and they've done it to take the piss out of wheelbase, I think. I don't so know, I just think, sorry, I just think more people are becoming more, like, especially as I get older, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> and if that quarter of an inch makes tray flips work, yeah, I'm, well, I'm all about course, that. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It makes work. Sorry, right. Whose phone's on notifications? Oh, that's me. That that's me. I'm sorry. Harry. That's me. Oh, we'll yeah, get on to the wheelbase and the shape when Terrible it comes round to the pro questions. But yeah, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, nerdery. So get yeah, ready. Right. So, so let's from, go back to so, the beginning. Yeah, from the <laughs> basics. Tell us uh, where did you grow up and where did the move to the US come from and why? Um, I grew up in um, uh. Well, I was born in like Dartford, England, near Dartford, like South London. And then um, my dad just got a job. Uh, he kind of got headhunted for a, a computer programming job. So he ended up um, going to Texas back and forth for this job. And, and eventually we got flown out there mm -hmm. as a family. So I guess I went there when I was like um, four. So I like was born in London, but then, you know, kind of grew up in texas at such a young age and then um ended up coming back when i was like 13 or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was fun being there it's definitely a eye-opening experience yeah did you texas start skating huge. there i got my first board there and i did kind of like uh go to a few skate parks like one or two i went to like this one in texas that's, i think it's still there it's called eisenberg skate park the tony hulk tour went through oh, okay. there it was like a big deal yeah um Went there a few times and um, I never really met anyone who skated. I'd seen some people skating once on my street and I tried to run out and find them. Yeah. Because this is like the 90s. Yeah. yeah. And I couldn't find them. I was like, where the fuck did I go? Fuck! I'm never going to find another skater. <laughs> um, and then when I came back to England, I really sort of like met people that skated and started to like do kickflips and, and, and stuff like that. I used to f fly off curbs or like yeah. try and hang up on a mini ramp all the time to do yeah. early grabs or something in a helmet but i couldn't really like skate i didn't know anyone to help me so did you um did you come back over with your family or did you come over on your own or no no the whole like uh my dad's um co the company my dad worked for ended up um going bankrupt because it was like a i guess like a competition at the time in the states that loads of companies are trying to be start up telecommunication companies like uh, bt or virgin or something like this and uh, his company obviously just didn't win. They went liquidated overnight. And I remember my mom freaking out, like, I'm going to fucking phone the newspapers. I'm going to fucking can't do this to us. And then, uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, we're going home. And then we just all went home as a family. And are your parents in London now? Um, we went back to London for a little bit. And then we went to uh, Kent. Um, and my parents live in Ashford and Kent. Oh, amazing. Um, Kent's right nice. Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> So much happening there. Yeah, no, it's quite no, quiet. No, it's Did you go quiet. back there much? I've been back a few times, yeah, yeah. Skate park's still there, and uh, some of my friends are still there. They live in, like, the next town over in Folkestone where that 
multi-story skate park thing. Yeah, that looks. Is, is Folkestone where Questions lives? I think. <clears throat> oh, I think he's in Margate. Yeah. Yeah, but it's really close. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's all kind of the same zone. So yeah, yeah I live like there, him. and we we grew up there after Texas. So like from like 13 to till I left, I guess I was in Ashford. How was how was that as like a culture change from like Texas, which is the biggest state in America, <laughs> to like the corner of the country, which is tiny? Um, yeah, it was well big culture change, man. Just different uh, mindsets. Like at that age, like uh, when I was in Texas, I was I don't know still playing Pokemon cards mm -hmm. and like Nothing like wrong I had with a that. pager and yeah. like, I don't know. It was like pretty slow. Like pretty simple and then like when we came back to england you know it's a really fast moving country progressive so like even the kids next door when you know you meet a new kid the same age as you they were like dressed like an adult and had a mobile phone and like yeah we're talking about really grown-up things like smoking behind the bike sheds and shit. oh yeah exactly. and i was like wait what like, <laughs> nah i got charizard and smoking's bad like <laughs> you know i didn't get it and i had to grow up really really quick yeah I learned that really really quick from bullying to be fair yeah yeah how, how did it work with your family being over there was it like a green card visa kind of set up that you could come yeah. and go as you wanted and so we i guess we couldn't come and go as we wanted because of the green card rules but um yeah we applied to get a green card um and you know i don't i was so young at the time i don't know the whole story of why we didn't get it but we just didn't get it i think it was maybe the company going bankrupt or i don't know something to do with paperwork i remember but yeah we just didn't get it in the end and they were like well you don't have a job anymore yeah you're not working so we can't continue the application and like basically we'd have to start again and we were gonna go to uh toronto canada oh amazing yeah, for I'll like a that. year and try again and then my mum was like, nah, let's go yeah. home. Like, my whole families are there. And like, Yeah, it must be pretty tough. Because we were just the only part, only ones of our family to ever go there and do that. Yeah. We were, like, alone out there. Have you got any siblings as well? Yeah, I have an older sister and an older brother. Did they go with you when you were the whole Yeah, time? yeah, but they remembered England before we left because right. they were older. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're pretty happy to go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't remember England. I remember, like, one or two vague memories about, like, riding in the car as a kid or, like, the dog. Yeah. I was like, what's England? Like, it's probably pretty heavy moving your family over there as well if you've got young kids and that. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Probably the idea of moving back, your mum was like, fuck this, let's go. Yeah, I, I couldn't imagine like uh, how my dad did that. I don't know how he did that. It's quite a lot to have three kids living yeah. in a council estate, get headhunted for a job and yeah, live that's in Texas. Mad, isn't it? And we had like custom built house and Corvettes and like we were doing really well. Yeah. Like, my dad had a good job at the time. Were you... So he was there for about 10 years. Yeah, about 10 years. Because you didn't get a green card, I guess. Was you, were you just traveling back and forth all the time? Oh, what, like, for skateboarding now? No, for, for when your family was there. She said you didn't. the family didn't get a green card to live, like, residency uh, card, No, right? so, like, so, I guess, like, when you apply, you have to, like, stay in the country. Oh, yeah, you do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you can't leave, basically. And yeah. then when it all fell through... Because the green card's like six years, and so I don't know how it would have worked. Because maybe he had like a work visa or something. Yeah, he got an extension or, or something. Probably just like kept it. extending it, trying to work out what's going on. And yeah, and then it all fell through, kind of thing. Because um, I've never actually done that process myself. I just go. I was going to ask you, like, what what is your deal with? Because obviously you're backwards and forwards to. Um, I just go as a tourist on a visa. You go for like a three month. Yeah, it's like as long as you're not competing. Um, or making any any money into yeah like bank. winnings or you're scheduled for like something that you're gonna get paid for it's like okay last time i went actually i went in um february this year and i got there and they were like fuck what are you doing here and i was like skating i was just about to say if you notice that every time you go back because i've been back three times in the last year every time you go back it's a little longer to get through there's like an extra question like why, oh, are, you back, yeah. why are you back here again so soon how are you paying for it and it's yeah. like, you can't be like, oh, I'm a professional skateboarder, because they'll just be like, well, let's well, see your bank. I don't know. Yeah, you have to tell them. So, like, so if you, like do, you, do you say you're a pro skater? Yeah, they're like, so what do you do for work? And I'm like, a professional skateboarder. Who are you staying with? This guy. What does he do? He's a professional skateboard filmer. Yeah. And I like, they're like, and are you competing? I'm like, no. And they sent me to the secondary room, and I sat there for like four hours. I was here, a little interrogation. Yeah, and I went to the desk, and I was like, please don't fucking send me home like it's such a long flight um but they, surely they could just google you 
Yeah, like, so he did. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah, he no. did. When I got to the desk, he Googled me. Oh, wait like, till next time that you go and they Google this. No, I, the first thing they did was, um, they, I must put my name. And they're like, so uh, how long have you been pro? And I was like, oh, fuck. Uh, like this, yeah, this many years? And then the guy said he had skated because it was in San Francisco. And he was like, oh, yeah, I used to skate. I know the brands, and blah, blah, blah. I know Tasha. He was like, are you competing or doing anything like this? And I was like, nah, nah, I just come here and like skate and film. And we just make online videos and shoot photos. And he said that was fine on an Esther, actually. Yeah. Um, he was like, oh, yeah, he actually switched it and was like, oh, you know, if you want to stay longer, you can get an athlete visa. Oh, no way. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no, nah, no, nah, I like going home. Like, it's okay. Like, I don't want to stay that long. And he was okay with it in the end. Surely... You know? Like you saying you're you're there to film and make video stuff that that is how you part of how you earn money, isn't it? Because yeah, yeah. It's, it's putting out content. Yeah, I so, don't really like compete, so yeah. yeah that's I guess, all I do. but they they see it, they see it as like, and uh, you know, you, like Tony Hawk kind of thing. You compete, and that's how you earn your your living. But it's different for you guys, isn't it? Yeah, like, well, they don't really but, yeah see it. Um, yeah, but there probably will be a time where it's like if you're a pro skater and you're going into America to film that is essentially how you make your name as a pro skater and that is how you earn the money so i bet one day they'll they'll be yeah, like, maybe they're just not caught up yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how that's gonna work because it's all online and then so you can't really like it's just hard to track it. that way yeah, yeah you know but this, I mean? this is it they can't there's no way of quantifying how much money you're gonna earn from that clip yeah or, or like, like i don't know it's like nerding out on it but yeah like you say if you go to the country and film that's how you make the, your your money or, or like earnings from doing that so they might say no one day but then like at the same time like imagine you wouldn't uh, weren't allowed to put like a video on like an american website yeah, because yeah, of the same there, reason yeah. there's also. probably so many like loopholes and stuff you can get around it but yeah it's quite so, interesting though isn't it i mean like we had when carl shipman was on like his whole time in america came to a halt because he didn't have the visa they just couldn't, they wouldn't sort him a visa yeah, would and, they? but then and we're talking 20 well 20 years ago it's like 97 so it was Maybe. kind of a different time where like yeah pro skateboarder was probably completely off the radar for people yeah at, and then they probably you know maybe not have given them a visa because they didn't understand it kind of thing yeah. but um, that's interesting yeah. i have thought about it but like yeah it's quite a lot of money and uh I just don't know, to apply I like for it. yeah i like england yeah. but it's nice well this is the thing if you've if and if you were desperate to be out there you'd think fuck it this is pay and get it done but the fact that you like coming back and you like being here and you can split your time yeah, quite yeah. freely. Like it, but like when you go, a deluxe paying for you to go on the plane, they, they help yeah, you Yeah, I, I, so, I ask some sponsors to cover the flight. Yeah, so there's yeah. no, it's not real, it's not a biggie anymore, is it? You know, like back in like the, the mid nineties where it was like, you had to be in America. Yeah. Or you were just, that was it, you were cut off. It's times have changed. You can be anywhere now, can't you? And, yeah, especially with um, the internet and yeah. like European skateboarding has grown so much now. Like like you say, you don't have to yeah. be in America. In fact, most Americans want to be in Europe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like coming here. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the last two times I've been to the States, I've had the same um, immigration officer or whatever they're called sat at the desk. The same so, one. So the second time I went, the guy was like, you was here four months ago. What are you doing? I was like, well, I come here to skate and film and I make videos back home, but a lot of my mates live here. And I also work for this company. And he was, this is no fucking bullshit, he's so sick. He's kind of like, I'm in an R in about it. And I was like, do you know Thrasher? And he was like, yeah, Thrasher magazine. I was like, I've just had a video go on that. And he was like, write it down. So I like wrote it down and he was just like, enjoy, enjoy your stay. Then I went back a third time. He asked me the same questions and I was like, I was here about six months ago video on fresher and he was just like enjoy yourself and you just let me in wow because he recognized it, cause, you because thankfully it was the same <coughs> dude but i've found that like every time i go through i watch how people approach up to like to talk to them to get the photos and to like scan the finger and yeah, everyone's yeah. like in themselves and i'm just up hat off hey oh, mate how you doing and just doing it that way i've been through every time in like five minutes really? it's, it's, been, I, uh, it's been no problem with it i must look like a nervous book because they're just like i think in that situation like most people would be like yeah yeah the queue is something. massive yeah and you can yeah. see that all, all the 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 what do they call it the the one-way mirrors or whatever they're called they can oh the, yeah well, you, know they're they're watching, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know behind those mirrors there's people there like just like 
trained yeah, they, they don't to pick out there. people. Yeah, who look. they will be like, why is he looking at his phone constantly? Like, why is he yeah. like looking around? Why has he got his arms crossed? Hmm. Like, they were, I is mean, he with anyone? Yeah. Behavior, behavioral ana thing. analysis. Yeah, it's I mean, you approach they... them and they're not like sat there friendly, are they? Like, no, maybe but, in but Canada that's... they're like, hey, yeah, yeah. Like, how are you? I don't know. Every time but that's I've their been jobs, to the... isn't it? It's to intimidate yeah. to a certain extent to see if you yeah, can break course. down at that point. Yeah. And then, then if the when you go into again. the secondary room, it's pretty funny. You're looking at everyone in there and you're yeah. like, fuck, like, you'll definitely go in. You'll go in. Yeah. It's pretty funny. My mate Will told me. Last time we was in the States, because I went out there first. I was there for two weeks, and then Will came out for, and he matched the other three weeks with me. I did like five weeks or something like that. We picked him up from the airport, and the guy was like, have you got anything in your bag we need to know about? And he was like, no, nah, it's fine. So they randomly searched him, and he had loads of weed-shaped wax. Like, <laughs> um, wax, like, like wax with like, we made some like baghead wax, like blocks of, blocks of wax with weed in it, and the guy was just like, what's this? <laughs> and he said he had to run him through exactly what it is and how to use it he looked in another part of his bag all of his blunt wraps and the guy was like what's this and he was like he's from like Birmingham he was like, he was like Mate, I can't even lie about it his blunt wraps and he was just like all right go through but, yeah, yeah. Just, Fucking hell. but he said he sat there <laughs> and he was like fuck it's gonna be nine hours straight back yeah I'm that's straight the on fear. the plane you know you yeah. can do like a, a pre-check can you yeah you can pay for like TSA pre-check <clears throat> and basically they just you get like green flags so whenever you show up that you go like go straight through but you have to have like a proper security clearance and shit like that i don't know if it's how much does that cost there. no idea i've just heard people talk about it on podcasts yeah i've seen that but i i don't know if as a tourist you can do it mm. i don't know you should look into the athlete visa because remember when shipman said that as soon as he got his yeah, they, they like, turned up and they were just like, "Come through, Mr. Shipman." Yeah, and they, they just said the it queue. was unreal. Yeah, yeah, cut they the will. It's like you're American then, and he it's can in, just it's go insane. American queue. Like... Well, that was a bit of an airport nerdery. No, it's interesting it? stuff, yeah, it's isn't good. it? You no, know, yeah, like, of course. Because like, you know, if, if I mean, you're a young skateboarder trying to go to America or, or just yeah, you know, go out there, you need to know these little things. And... So you said you were in the interrogation room for like four hours or something. Is that the longest you've been in one? Of uh, yeah, I was the longest I've been in there. I was fucking shit in it. Uh, the first time I was in there, it was pretty quick. It was only like half an hour. And they thought I was there to trim weed and murder mountain. They were like, yeah, we've had most people from the UK to trim weed and murder mountain. That's exactly what they said. And I was like, what? Nah, 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 nah. I'm not, not trimming weed. I'm skating. Is there any toilets in the interrogation room? No, nah, you're not allowed to. All go on your phone. I'd definitely be shitting then. They, they let you keep your phone on you, but if you get it out of your pocket and start texting, you get one warning. And if he sees you do it again, he takes it. Oh my god. Yeah, it's well, like people they, being in school in case you're telling anyone. Yeah. Like, what do I say? What do I... You're like, run, don't pick me up. Yeah, like, it's something. I don't know. You know, that's like a that's whole crazy. thing. But, uh... Start playing Candy Crush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just playing Candy Crush. No, the, yeah, interesting, so the, um, the first time they were like, they thought I was trimming weed and they were like, um, in Murder we Mountain. find any camping stuff a fucking compass, a flashlight, a step 10 peg, you're going home. And then I looked over in this interrogation room because this guy next to me, he was in like purple Thailandy pants with dreads and like you know, a you fucking know. camping bag <laughs> and like with a tent on it. And I was like, you're all fuck it. And he was from England. I was like, you're going home, dude. I know this already. Like, <laughs> Did you say fuck. that to him? Nah, I didn't say shit. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to get busted. Yeah. But fucking I was like, damn, thing. they really thought I was fucking, I mean, maybe I should have trimmed it. It's a very specific <laughs> thing they, what they think you're doing, isn't it? Have you seen the documentary about Murder Mountain? It's no. gnarly. Is it? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It doesn't exist like that anymore. It's just old no, gentrified. That was like eighties, right? Well, it? it was like many years ago when yeah. it was like cartel. And run. then they've changed all the weed laws now, so like you have to have fucking certificates and weeds tested and pesticides, and you can grow the wrong weed and not be able to sell it and stuff like that. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> I, I've had friends that still trim weed with like fucking diggers and warehouses and shit. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. There's, too strong we can't sell it like, nobody would take it like it doesn't pass rules or whatever That's so where does it go just to england <laughs> yeah yeah to england <laughs> i'm not even kidding just get shipped is over it, is that where all the the cali the uk cali stuff comes from? yeah it's like part of it yeah yeah it's no like way. a whole part of the scheme because you know you got all this product and you can't sell it because you know that's how california's controlled it by making yeah, all the weed yeah. laws now so then like mm -hmm. yeah and, like, you need to get rid of it like the cartels of like fucking around in california a lot as well i heard as well. yeah for sure they'll be picking up on all this stuff they'll be like yeah we'll give you half the money and at least you make some money and then 
So I guess they they have to scientifically test it. Yeah. And yeah. if the if too, the levels are not right, that's it. Too strong or yeah, yeah, too strong, too weak. Oh, you wear the used one they, pesticide. Fucking. How they've managed to yeah. control it still? Yeah, because like yeah. I've been into sh- some weed dispensaries. Like, you know, fucking why not? And they'll be like, oh yeah, this one's got all proven no organic pesticides. Like this yeah, one's yeah. verified, mm-hmm. certificated, and then. Yeah, it's the same. And you're like, I want, well. I want the shit they rejected. Give me some of that. Yeah, that's, yeah. I just grab a handful. Of oil. <laughs> I just said, I don't care. I'm from England. I will smoke <laughs> fucking soap bar. <laughs> <clears throat> Continuing with England again. When you, so you moved back. How come you decided to settle on Manchester? What was it about Manchester that drew you to it? Moving there. Um, I don't really know. I guess uh, Kent was pretty boring, mm-hmm. and then. Mm-hmm. Um, but you thought that I would I would have thought the natural move would have maybe have been like London or something like that. Uh well I did live in London after Kent for like eight years or something. Mm-hmm. I was living in um Hackney, like by uh, Mare Street. Um it's a pretty dope place actually, which is yeah, it was a really dope place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um well, I, I was living there for a bit, but before that I would go to Manchester a lot and spend time there because um the black sheep skate store uh like they, I don't know. I didn't know him at the time. I was in Ashford, and they like seen this thing I'd I'd put out on online. It was the DVS Hook Me Up comp. Yeah. And um, who else was in that? Was John Tanner was on part I think of that? John he? Tanner was part of it. Yeah. Um, Fucking hell, John was a radist. Mm-hmm. He's from like my neck of the woods. He's an interior designer now to the start. Oh no way! Like rad dude. He had, get him on. He had some. Yeah. He man, he was good. Yeah, I haven't seen him in um in years. But yeah, so then they phoned up the skate shop and I went in one day and they were like, this guy phoned and left a, a note. <laughs> like, here's an email address. I don't think I even had an email. <laughs> um, well, yeah, not one that worked anyway. And I like hit him up and they said, if he came to Manchester and like skated, I don't know, he might get sponsorship. So I was like, fuck, you know, should probably go. But I smoked a lot of weed and shit at the time. So I didn't mm. have a lot of money. And I worked at McDonald's. <laughs> so uh, my friend drove us up and he paid for it. And uh, yeah, we ended up meeting Tez Robinson and- um, Big up Tez. Yeah, big up Tez. Um, Harry the gaffer at Black Sheep. And then Eddie Belvedere, Steve Legend. Prime, Social Stew, Rob Smith, Dave Monaghan, like all that old Manchester skate scene, mm. as well as the Note Boys like Joe and everyone, Chris Barrett. Um, and then uh, they were like, yeah, really stoked on you. So I would go up a lot from Asheville. I'd get the mega bucks up. Mm. That's all they would pay for. How long does that travel? Eight hours. Fuck and me. I used to tie a sleeping bag on my backpack <laughs> with shoelaces. And it would always come undone on the fucking tube, I swear to God. And this thing would just trail behind me like a caterpillar's tail. <laughs> like this red and blue sleeping bag, like so dirty, like just trailing. I'd not know. I'd be like, oh, fuck. I have to like wrap it up. People walking past. And I was like... 18 nervous like anxiety yeah just like fucking did i make the bus i made the bus all right sick just sit there like the mega bus was insane wasn't it i only went on it a few times but it was always like i think it's still about it was like oh, it's one pound fee was it the fair start one, one pound, pound plus 50, plus 50p booking fee and it's like we can't book that without the booking fee so it starts at 150 doesn't it <laughs> They used to fucking irritate me. Don't, <laughs> don't get too much into it. used to warm out that big fat brick on the back of the Oh, bus. yeah, <laughs> dude. Um, so, yeah, I used to come up <clears throat> loads doing that, and I met um, Kev Parrott from London. Big up, Kev. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big up, Kev. Um, huge. Top done. Cog mm-hmm. in the industry. Yeah. And, like, he's supported so many skateboarders and made so mm-hmm. many things happen for skateboarders. Yeah, definitely. Um, he, uh, I met him through Taz, and he w- was like, oh, yeah, come to London more. You know, like, so I would then not get the mega bus to Manchester so much, but like, I would go to London and um, film with him over like the weekend or whatever. Mm. And uh, Money Morph, who's been on your show. Yeah. Mm. He, uh, big up Money Legend. Morph. He, yeah. um, he was, he had this place like a stay called the castle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, legendary place. Legendary place. And that really, really um, helped a lot with a place to stay and like mm. Mm. skateboarding as a whole to like be with skaters and filmers and be part of like the London street scene and mm. stuff. So Morphs are radis, isn't they? Yeah, radis dude. Well. Yeah, he used to help me out a lot when I was skint, like Yeah. Um he used to be like 
oh, he wants to go to chicken shop for me. I'll buy you a meal. And I used to be like, fucking, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> every night. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. She's like, what would you want? I'll go, I'll go right now. Do like, you remember um, needed that. the day that he came out of prison? He put on his stories <laughs> in KFC. And he's like, and one slide's like, yo, buzzing for this. I want to get some chicken. And the next one, it's just him. And he's like, no, that was dead, fam. Like, as if I've thought I've been missing out on that for four years or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Was, like, he was just so annoyed about it. When Morf used to say that to you to get his dinner, what was his order then? Because he's had oh, some pretty God. like legendary um, chicken skin wrapped fries. Yeah, he that. invented that shit. Yeah. I swear to God, because now some places you'll go and they'll have like chicken skin fried pizza. No way, you should get some. But, uh, he would yeah, he'd buy... Um, Big up Morf. He would buy a pizza from a takeaway. And then he, I would go to the chicken shop for him for the time I got back and everything, it would come. So we get two different takeaway yeah. options. Yeah, yeah. Oh, or it'd be like Domi's or this other, um, just like kebab house takeaway that he liked. And he, because it was something about the tomato sauce he didn't like. <laughs> and he would so then, specific. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then he would chuck, he would just like take the skin off the chicken, yeah. all the meat was still on the bone, and then like pour the chicken shop box onto the pizza. And, and that was it. That's how we did it. Pretty nuts, yeah. I don't know. He's the, I swear he invented that. Like trailblazing in the takeaway world, it's morph. He's sick. He messages me here and there, just like, yo, this guy's in the country. Shall see if he wants to come on. Like yeah. he fully actually nice dude. has helped yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. He I mean, should get his own takeaway. He should do that. He's should... always leaving comments on the post as well. Yeah, yeah. He's good. yeah, yeah. I was he's actually sick. speaking to him uh, this morning. He's like, oh, where are you off to London? And I was like, no, I'm coming here to do this. And he's like, you have been on there? We were sending some yeah. messages i've actually got voicemail i should listen to but maybe not the best time he's probably right calling now. us a bunch of pricks or something yeah i know imagine i opened it no, he said you guys yeah, are that, sick he was that like yeah, toby a really guys are right fucking like, prick. it was really fun yeah it was a, it was a fucking you know, somebody time. else actually hit me up and was like where are you going and i just told him and they were like oh yeah i've listened to it all the time on um what is it fucking itunes where is uh, it uh, apple you can get Spotify, it on, on all your podcast places yeah. yeah i didn't know that yeah we've got it on every website Fuck available yeah. for streaming like and subscribe yeah uh, I'm, I'm gonna just peaked over <laughs> one, I'm gonna. just peaked over 1.5 million listeners worldwide so that's good fucking really we get in there yeah Sick. more than the nine club he kind of blew it going on there first should have come did. in first oh, <laughs> Don't tell him big up chris roberts yeah, yeah big up chris guys there. Drone he seems like a nice dude me. chris roberts yeah dead nice i've met chris a mm. few times oh. did you get any nine club merch when you left i did i left it out of shot because uh, it's going to be today. He's, he's got it under his jacket there. <coughs> I did. No, it's over there. Um, no, more than welcome to bring it on. We don't care. No, no, I don't, I don't know. We'll but, send you some brain drain merch. Yeah. Yes, there we go. Oh, but that's what I was going to say when you guys are on about sponsorship things. You should ask Yeti. Yeah, the hit them up. The cooling company. The Produce, cooling company. Yeah. Fraser. Oh, okay. Right hit up Yeti. Yeti. The fucking, yeah. that's the one, dude. Yeah. yeah well, if you get any endorsement there. from Yeti, we'll split it with you yes. and send you some stuff. Fuck. We've had some pretty good sponsors. So we've had like like all like a lot of core brands have sponsored this. We've got yeah, a lot. Slappy Trucks are hooking up a season at the minute, which is nice. Who else has we've had? Fucking hell, there's Sabbath Wheels. Yeah. Quite a lot. Lo lot of brands. Yeah, de yeah, yeah the, Ninja the Ninja Air Fryer's got Nin to be the top. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking hell, yeah. Ninja UK, sort your act out, give us a full-time hookup. Yeah, so, that would be sick. So, like, the, you know... <laughs> you know <laughs> that would be sick. <laughs> here we go. Strap in. <laughs> Get so, ready. You know the dual zone one? That oh, they sent us, right? Me. So it's two drawers next to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Air fryer. They've now done it, but it's vertical to save space on your kitchen worktop. Okay. So Ninja, I could, I'm moving into a new place soon. I could really fucking do one. Though. I've got a Ninja air fryer at my new place. <coughs> I seen it and the first thing I thought of was you naked using it. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? Totally uh, random. If Ninja supplies with an air fryer, I will, I will make wings. Well, why don't we use it on the show with yeah, a guest? And that would be incredible. <laughs> <Imagine> <laughs> you just had like tater tots cooking. Imagine getting Morph back on the day oh, that we get an air fryer and, and, and we get him to do the ski. Yeah. Dude, yeah, Ninja. Ninja. he's got the maybe dual chicken need, and then... Maybe we need to get, decade. we need to sort this out. Um, randomly, like the last couple of weeks, I've had people DMing me, have you got a hookup discount code for Ninja? I ain't fucking got anything. I didn't mean to one. Like, I, yeah. I'm nothing to do in Ninja. The thing is, on that first episode, I'm sure we were like, Ninja, this is our first episode, but we we're already predicted to get like yeah. a million hits. And they they just, they just on Instagram straight the way send us your address. And yeah, we, were just, like, we were just like, what the fuck? <laughs> fuck, dude. And then it turned up like stuff. two days later, yeah. big box. And but didn't the, the, the person who won it, because it was like a giveaway on Instagram, didn't they just get it and sell it or something probably yeah oh on. yeah it's probably the, during the ninja air fryer hype where everyone was yeah. trying to buy it and you it's, buy it's, them. i mean yeah. it, it, that hype is justified 
it's fucking yeah, really brilliant. Really no way. Yeah, like I hardly switched my oven on. Let's uh, <laughs> ninja air fryer. Yeah, let's, come let's on, I'll get hungry right. in a minute. <laughs> let's let's get off that. Like no, let's before talk more about ninja kitchen. Um, but yeah, big up the castle and um, <clears throat> yeah. and money morph. That's how I ended up yeah, um, yeah. in London, basically. Just so just talking about money morphs fast food stories. So we know that you worked at McDonald's. Fraser wanted to know, is there a secret menu? And I wanted to know, is there anything just absolutely kind of rotten that they don't tell people about? Um, I mean, look at it this way. I'm not going to stop ordering McDonald's if that shit's made on the floor. No, I, I, I still eat McDonald's yeah. after working there. Like, I don't know of a secret menu, but then each franchise is different. Like, um, I don't know how. Have you had Mackey's in America? I oh, don't. Oh, it's so good, right? No, 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 no. Oh, I heard it's real bad. It. It's I terrible. It. Oh, it's man. fucking disgusting as fuck, and it really depends on which restaurant you go to. Yeah. Wherever I was quality. getting it from was fucking sick, and they were like, "How?" Like on Uber Eats, they they, they ask how you want your burger, like regular or well done. Cooked. It's actually a thing, and I did well done, and it turned up all crispy around the edges. Whoa! No and way. the fries were huge, and I was just like, "I'm gonna be a fat fuck <laughs> if I'm okay. Eating. Do you ever used to make anything like random, <clears throat> like throw a bunch of burgers together on your? Oh burgers? yeah, I would uh, make um. I'd get a big tasty patty, uh, like a big tasty burger, and I would like I wouldn't use two patties, but I would like turn it into a Big Mac. Like, okay. I had all the Big Mac stuff. Yeah. And that was my thing I would do. Did you have a name like, for it? Uh, the big nah. lintel. The lint the big yeah. tail. The but yeah, no bag. secret menu. I didn't see um anything sketchy. Uh yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I'd never seen anything sketchy. Never seen any uh, one guy wrote in a Big Mac box, like on the inside, dickhead. <laughs> and like he was because it's all like a chain thing like one guy does this one guy mm. does that and so he did it gave it to the guy and obviously he's preparing the burger and he didn't see it and it went out and some kid got it oh amazing and he come back and was just like what the fuck is this and the guy like lost his job and shit no that's insane yeah and it was like total accident you should have been like it's a Big Mac <laughs> yeah what the fuck you think it is just Big like Mac oh let me go head. see like switch the box quick like, what do you mean there's nothing there yeah um, but yeah, I've never seen anything sketchy in the one I worked in. Mm. But well, I guess it's such a big franchise and it does well. They've probably got like pretty strict measures on how to keep it clean at least. Yeah, if you like eat during shift, you're losing your job. Like yeah, immediately, like you can't do anything. You can't, you can't quickly just be like chicken nugget in the no, mouth. No, no, no. If anyone sees you, you lose your job immediately on the spot. Shall we just for one brain drain episode, we'll... Try and get a job at Mackey's just to get fired on the same day. <laughs> that would be incredible. <laughs> but, Speed run a career but, at Mackey's. But we have, like, we have like little body cams on and we're just like, yeah. Fire. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can do that. Do you want to collab? Let us know. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Mackey did his collab. If we get enough people banging on about it, it might be a sort of. You know how Palace did the collab with Mackey's? Yeah, yeah. Right? I heard that the only reason they did the collab is so because Lev wanted card. a black card. Yeah. Really? Just so he can eat at Mackey's for free for the rest of his life. How of all the restaurants you can get a black card at? I wouldn't. I'd probably go for like Pizza Express. No, but that's Nando. that's just Na Lev, yeah, though, Nan isn't it? Nando. Yeah, like, he just wanted the Mac. I mean, Mackey's black cards kind of sick. Yeah, I bet you could walk into some franchise and just be like, "Nah, mate, what's that?" Yeah, like no. Like, how are you gonna? It's like, kind of like a myth, isn't it? An urban myth. Yeah. The best one would be Five Guys. If you could get Ooh. Five Guys. Black oh, black. Wendy's. I like nice. a Wendy's black. Wendy's is good. Square There's burgers. There's been one opened in Derby as well. It's pretty. Is there really? It's over near where you were living, wasn't it? Y yeah. Yeah. That's wow. the only thing I'm missing about, aside from all the crackheads, obviously, where I lived. I've just moved <laughs> kind of near the countryside now. There was like a Starbucks, a Wendy's, an Audi, and a Dunkin' Donuts. And I was what? like, what more do you need? And I was like, I'm set for life. I just What's... need a ninja kitchen showroom <laughs> and I'm fucking an escape park. And I think they should be hooking us up with some permanent hookup ninja because the amount of times I've the, the Baconator. It. Which chain's up? The Baconator. The American chain. Tim Horton. No. There's one of those in Leicester. I've never been. Tim Horton. There's one up the road from here. It's I'm good. Not, I'm not sure. Well, whilst he's searching for that, let's get on yeah, to. Yeah, Wendy's. Wendy's. Yeah, Wendy's. Yeah, go on. Jack in the Box is good, but it's hor but horrible at the same time. I don't Just fast food in America is horrible. Oh, yeah. Is, yeah. Like, is the In-N-Out Burger really live up to the hype? Yeah, actually, that's the only one. Like all the other chains are like gross, and it depends which one you go to. So like in America, most people just like eat independently, like a Thai or Mexican. Mm -hmm. Best thing to do in Cali is taco truck. Yeah, good taco trucks, fucking crazy good. We um, we went from Boston to where did I go? New Jersey. Don't know, mate. To, to just on a whim to skate with Fred Gull. And he was there and we skated with him and it was sick. But on the way, we like stopped off and it was it was like such typical, like you watch an American hood film. Yeah. It's like there's a police chase and there's a helicopter and there was a white castle. 
and we like drove into the car park to go and there was just so much shit going on around us like just fucking wild shit like helicopters people screaming like cars like coming in and like squeezing through the um the drive through and everything just no one caring we were just like fuck this yeah we just go, left. Go. a big van with like eight skateboarders in it like with all the camera equipment we were just like let's get the fuck out yeah it was yeah, just, yeah, it was yeah, just like helicopters everywhere and i was like we're cl we're getting close to new jersey now <laughs> was, but i so the moral of the story is i never had a white castle oh like, yeah I've you know like you get the 12 one. burgers but they're like this yeah like, i've tiny. never like sliders or yeah, they're fucking I've never tiny i just just going back to the baconator what is in the baconator because <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, bacon, fucking all right what anything bacon. else <laughs> well it does just look like a double cheeseburger with bacon to be honest. probably is that's it doesn't of... look bad i'm not gonna lie uh, six pieces <laughs> of crispy apple with smoked bacon six fuck yeah. me yeah. Fuck, that's a heart attack three on each pack shall we film a brain drain show right now where we just go and get one with lintel <clears throat> yo you need a wendy's black card Oh, it'd be Yo, so good. This is Wendy's. You need to like, imagine that on the brain drain X Wendy's. You I need mean, to have, like loads of Wendy's boxes. For the like, amount of times, insane. like you know, as we go, we're gonna go into a bit of a busier time recording. We're doing two a week, maybe. Yeah, two, three. It's a not week. that big a deal for him to like chuck us a bag. Yeah. Of hook up like a delivery of, for enough for five people or something. It's, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, hey, we have an episode yeah, today. We need twenty burgers. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Better. Yeah, well, yeah, they're blowing it. Incredible. Let's get our fast food. Yeah, yeah, I feel like uh, I'm definitely getting really hungry now. <laughs> so, so, let's, let's go back to that didn't, um, happen, that didn't happen on the Nine Club episode. So, no, we didn't talk about fast, fast food. No, oh, no. Hold on a second. We need to talk about sponsoring this episode of the Brain Train Show. Toby, take it away. Today's sponsor is Slappy Trucks. Slappy Trucks comes from the mind of Mike Sinclair and was created through the lockdown. He was messing around with his trucks and he thought, hold on, I might just have a way to make them a little bit better. Slappy trucks provide the best grind clearance and slappy angle to keep your kingpins from the dreaded snag on Smith's, Feebles, Hurricanes, Bennett and Barley grinds and has been measured by Professor Paul Schmidt. Slappy trucks have the quickest turn, mm. the best grind clearance, less wheel bite, no breaking time and are 100% more fun. I'm currently riding the inverted kingpin hollow ones and they're very nice and I'm getting on great with them. They are sick. Slappy Trucks also have an incredibly large team and some of our favourites are Mike Fraser, Leonardo Finkus, A. Bethel, the cab killer Ira and Arissa True. They're also sorting out Will Sayer, Ben Plum, Liddy Strachan, Twiggy, Manny Haddon in the UK. Where can people find out about Slappy Trucks Ford? They can find them at Slappy Trucks on Instagram or www.slappytrucks.com or simply head to Roller Snakes and just search Slappy Trucks and see how many we have in stock. Toby? Back to the show. Back to the show right Back now. to the show. Back to the show. Back to now. the show. So who was your first actual proper sponsors? Uh, my first, first I, I guess. Ups. Oh, I mean, there was a... Uh... Yeah, I forgot about that, dude. There was one before Black Sheep, which was this one called Enemy Skateboards. I don't know if you're enemy ever, skateboard. Yeah, no, heard that one. Find it. it was like really random. You know, like with some guys, just like I'm gonna start a company. I've printed 50 boards. Uh, uh, yeah. That happens about <sighs> 10 times a week over at the minute. It's fucked. Exactly. So like he did it, and then um, yeah, there's no way you're gonna find it. It was not even. It was before Instagram, and like it probably on Facebook. It's like a tree, a really bad tree graphic, and they kind of um, were the first people to like. I don't know, give me a board and take me on a trip. We actually went to Stoke-on-Trent randomly. What um, a trip. Big up Stoke-on-Trent. Yeah, it was still the plaza. We didn't really do much, but... Who um, else was on the team? Was it... It was just a bunch of kids from the local skate park. And, yeah. And, yeah. like, this guy was willing to take us skating. Mm. It was a little bit weird, to be honest, but... um uh, yeah, so I guess after that, I, my first sponsor was Black Sheep. Big up yeah. Black Sheep. Yeah, yeah Black Sheep. I do love Black Sheep, it's sick. Um, yeah, there's no way you're going to... I'm going to try, man. <laughs> I don't know, there it's might be a, a... My fucking... reputation depends on me finding this deck. There might be, a, a, like, on my old Facebook, like, yeah. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do a deep dive. Yeah, maybe I posted it or I got tagged it, it in might, it. It might end up in the edit, it might not. Um... So then Black Sheep started Black Sheep, hooking up and then, um, Was I that was, when you'd actually moved to Manchester at that point? No, no, I was still living in Ashford and they were actually a distribution at the time called Two Distribution. That's right. And yeah. they did like um, iPath and mm. mod uh, Modus Bearings and a um, bunch of other stuff, a Jar. Uh, What's your thoughts on iPath coming back? Um, Has many people been talking about it in America? No, I've not heard anything. Yeah, but maybe you've only heard it from me, and that's just because I wanted to get some in just so I can get some of the cats on staff discount. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't that's know it. how that's gonna go. Uh, maybe it will go well. I mean, 
I don't loads know. of stuff like that's coming back right now in fashion so like yeah can't i could see the brand like at least coming back for a little bit mm -hmm. um but yeah so they had a distribution and i they used to like flow me stuff through their distribution and um from that i ended up meeting kip parrot and he started flowing me volcom stuff like from when i was like 17 18. Yeah, that, you've been so on volcom for a long time. long time been yeah there. yeah i've been on fuck like over 10 years for yeah. sure um, Volcom's sick as well yeah i really love the brand and the clothes the quality is uh kind of underrated people don't know how good the clothes really fucking are we get a lot of it in here we, we sell, sell a lot, lot of it i mean i know it can be expensive at times mm. but a pair of Volcom jeans will last you like well polar big boy's 150 quid or something stupid you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah like, these are like 50 quid like and way better and yeah. they're the same size and like better fit i don't yeah. I don't get it but i get the appeal it doesn't look the same but for like quality of clothing it's incredible so then i guess Volcom was my second and uh yeah, it all just kind of snowballs from there, you know. Mm -hmm. Try not to switch too many brands at the time or whatever. Yeah, stay loyal and true yeah, to the brand. Yeah, well, I didn't want to jump ship and go skip something I didn't know. Or like, yeah, no, that's yeah, that's good. That's the other thing, you know. I actually rode for Roller Snakes for like a <laughs> little did. while, yeah. Yeah. And at the time I was riding for like, uh, it was from the distribution. I was riding for a brand that they had started called Super Dead. Yeah, I remember <laughs> Which it, yeah. died really quick. It was ironic. I guess it was in the name. Yeah, I know, I did. We were so scared about that too. We were like, ah, fuck, I don't know. This I remember not... it coming out because there was a lot of brands popping up around that time, wasn't there? Yeah, and yeah. I remember that one coming out. Was just like... I had the Mike Manzori, the big dog, like puppy. It's like a, it had like a poodle on it, and it was gigantic, and it was like eating another dog. But the what a super dog? It was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it was a series. I don't remember. It was a. Po they were all blue. Yeah, and yeah. It had yeah. a and I think Vaughn had one. Vaughn was on it for a while, right? No, I Belvedere don't. was on it. Yeah, Belvedere, Missouri. I remember uh, that being feeling like it was around for a season. I got that board and then it just went. Yeah, so then when that went, I was riding for Roller Snakes and I didn't want to leave like Black Sheep, like leaving the board brand and going to real through distribution flow was like, was what I wanted, was going to do. But that meant I was going to leave Black Sheep and like leave the Manchester skateboarding scene, which I spent a lot of time there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just didn't want to do that. So I had to. Um, yeah, I phone at Roller Snakes and be like, sorry guys, I'm gonna go to Black Sheep. I'm really sorry about this. No, you didn't. You, okay you made the, the right end. decision. Yeah. yeah, they were cool with it in the end and yeah. it was all good. Um, because I rode with uh, John Bell and a few friends for Black Sheep. Kelly Dawson. Yeah. Big up Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, big yeah. up Kelly. I think he's back just... in Barcelona. He moved back, but he was just like, <clears throat> fuck England. I want the sun all the time. Yeah, I'm not so he's moved back to Spain. Yeah. Uh, just on what you were saying then about you phoned up and you, you quit Roll Snakes. Like, I think there's a lot of kind of people who are sponsored now who probably like don't handle that situation. You know, like That's... they just don't call. But like anyone who's got like any kind of, not integrity, but knowledge that if something better comes along and you're doing it for a valid reason leaving a company phoning up and having that conversation is completely okay no, yeah, no one's gonna have any issues with no that at no all. and they shouldn't you know <laughs> if you do um, have an issue you're a bit of a so you are idiot. true right a lot of young skateboarders or, or new to like sponsored skateboarding it's a lot different than you know what people perceive it was yeah way, i learned it was way different than what i thought it was going to be and you're right like if you do you get an offer have that conversation and yeah have the conversation worst thing you can do is ignore it and yeah. like just fucking switch brands and not tell them or like yeah you know because if you have that conversation too the, br the brand that you're on might really want to keep you and so then you might end up like getting a better deal hmm. or just learning that like hey actually that's not for me or this is what i want to do or you know i've seen people switch brands too quick and definitely just like shoot themselves in the foot yeah because like he handled it so bad and then all, any other brands like well why would we put them on <laughs> yeah news travels fast you know yeah, it, yeah ev everybody really knows everybody yeah and if massive. someone's a dick That's it, it. it gets back quick yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? but i mean if anyone on the we hook up if they ever phone me and said i'm gonna leave or do this or do that that's fine. Well, you've always said this. Yeah, you're never going like, to get in trouble. I've never no, had a brand cool. manager like, be like, oh, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, the you, most for you. Like, how fucking me. I've never had that. It's like, it's just skating. Yeah, you know? at the end like of the it's, day, it's like, a bit of wood with wheels on it. Yeah, and, and you just, just want your mate to like, yeah. I don't know, just skateboard and like have fun and be able to like yeah. make money or like eat if that's what they want to, you know, yeah. if you want to skate every day, you need to make the money. And so then like, yeah, if you get a good offer, that's what happens. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, 
surely people team managers brand managers would be stoked if one of their guys that they've have, like hooked up for a bit comes on and goes i've got this better offer yeah actually uh you know? i just got reminded when i left ipath for converse um converse gave me an offer and then, that he couldn't refuse uh well no ipath actually came back with a counter offer yeah and we're gonna pay me as well and so i was that like was a godfather uh, reference there like, what do i do i could stay here and like be with the Manchester crew, but it's kind of distribution getting paid, or I can like go with Converse, who I don't know anyone on, mm -hmm. and like do this thing. Um, at the time, I picked it because it was more money, but uh, That's fair. it was it was uh, I wanted, I needed money at the time, no money. This is it. You gotta have money to yeah, survive. Yeah, I used to get like you? fifty quid a month from Roller Snakes. I I genuinely would like live off that. Yeah. 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 It's mad, isn't it? Though? It's when, mad what you want to do. When you're younger, you, you make it last, don't you? You so. do, you really do. And that's, you know, Money Morph obviously supported me and helped me out loads yeah. in the castle with like yeah. meals and stuff. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole brand thing and like, yeah, don't be too quick to switch. Mm -hmm. Or like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a tough one with that one. So how did the, did you start off as Flow For Real, right? Was that through Shiner or? Yeah, that was, that was through Shiner. I, um, I Alan, actually couldn't get on a Shiner sponsorship for such a long time when Ginger, Ginger Jerome was working there. Yeah. I don't know why. I guess I just at the time I was like too new or anything like that. I'm not sure, but. Um, I think around that time, Shiner, I mean, they still are, but Shiner was giving away a lot of fucking product. Yeah. And I mean, like, riders. I remember like when you know, I used to hang out, do you remember Ben Cundall? Yeah, I used yeah, to hang out with all the time. And like, you know, at, the, at that time he was on Def, he was on Nike, he was getting Venture and fuck, uh, Hubble Wheels. Yeah. And the boxes he was getting each month was insane. Mm. He would literally like get his Nike stuff, just sell dunks for 20 quid to go to the pub that night. Yeah, and, yeah. And like, that was just him. And there was plenty of other people that were getting hookups from all their brands. Yeah, so probably yeah. for a time they were like, we literally can't give away any more stuff because we're maxed out, maybe. I think, yeah, I think it was a combination of that and then, um, yeah, just the loads of product and the teams were full mm. at the time. Yeah. Like, and, the, you know, there is a distribution thing. So, like, they're not trying to have, like, eight dudes on it. Yeah, yeah. Or... yeah, they're still limited to... And there's only so much they can do, do isn't it? I mean, yeah. they probably get budgets and allowances from the brands, but... And what's, so, the, what's um, the markups in skateboarding? Exactly, it's yeah. fucking paper thin. Nothing yeah, like, nothing. Like, you um, give a board away, you're losing all your profit. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, so I, I ended up going like on a uh, a Volcom tour with Dustin and Chima and Braden Savinsky in the UK. And nice. Chima Chima's fucking kind of sick. put the word out there to Jim to be like, I mean, the super dead had died. And then I, so I, so, you know, I phoned. <clears throat> Or like spoke with Chima about it and he had spoke with Jim and so then like they were like Jim's gonna call you um it was probably the first time I ever spoke with Jim Jim's one of the coolest people too. oh amazing like, I really dude. like him and he but he was like yeah we want to want you to get boards from Shiner and mm -hmm. and stuff like that so um Chima kind of put put it on yeah. to me otherwise I don't think I was like gonna get on Shiner or... Chima's fucking sick um He's and so then good. through that like yeah I just went on a few like Tours of real when they came to the UK and then, you know, I eventually made it out there to them and was skating with them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that helped a lot. But. Yeah. We, we were talking about this earlier. Like, I mean, I'm a massive fan of Deluxe and the brands they've had and like since day one. But yeah, like, that time. is the fucking raddest distro business to be involved in. Yeah. Because you've got all the best stuff, yeah. the best dudes, the best team. Like, I mean, you it's, can't get any better, can you? No, and it's pretty second <coughs> to none. And, and the operation they have there is like really wholesome and mm. and like everyone's uh, pulls, like connected. It's not like yeah. a huge company employee thing. I mean, it is obviously because you know, your company or whatever, you have to do all that stuff. But, yeah. you know, it's a tight knit community there. And when you see the operation, you're like, this is really sick. Like, mm. All of you guys are the ones sending wheels around the world, like, yeah. or boards. It's like really I always think see. about that, like, Spitfire being, I mean, we sell fucking shitloads of Spitfire stuff. I always wonder how many sets of Spitfire wheels do they make in each run? Because, you know, like the, the 53 or 52 millimeter conical full, the 99 one, the blue graphic. That's like the wheel that you see everyone riding that wheel. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and like, that's just here. Like, imagine that worldwide. There must be like... Billions. Fucking, I, reckon, I, mean, like, I just don't know. It's like, yeah. but 
Yeah, I don't know. Who's your hookup at Deluxe you were talking about? It's going to send you some stuff. Um, Hopefully send me a load of Spitfires. Mikel, no? I think... 52 no, mil. So this guy lives... <laughs> uh, I met a Worth guy. Worth gold. I went to a video premiere, the Fancy Lad video. Okay. And uh, I think his name's Cam. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He lives in Boston or somewhere on the East Coast. Okay, yeah, yeah. And we were just sat next to each other. And I always say to Toby, that's the beauty of skating is like, you know, you're not going to know everyone. And, you know, I was sat next to him talking, blah, blah, blah. Like, what do you skate, this and that? And he was just like, oh, if you need Thunder or Spitfire, anything from Deluxe, just message me. Oh, wow, and I was like, amazing. and I was like, sorry, who are you? And, like, <laughs> yeah. and he was like, oh, Cam, I work. I'm sure it's Cam. Um, I don't know where on the East Coast he lives, but he came. He's to not going to send you any free stuff. You don't know his name. But um, no, I'm pretty, I just don't know his last name. But um, that's a guy I can never and, remember. And he but. um, and he was just like, if you need anything, message me. And then when Shine put in the order, we'll put in a separate box aside. And like, I I left it for a couple of months because so I didn't just want to be like. Yeah, of course. But, but then obviously that Thunder guy. and stuff do bigger it. trucks and stuff like that. And I messaged him last week like, hey, man, can I maybe take you up on that offer? And he was just like, yeah, anything you want. Just yeah, I, see, the guy, I was the like, guys fucking at the hell. I was like, like know this. Like Jim especially in, um, in, San, like, in San Francisco and Berkeley and the, this, the younger skate community, the community there, he will go out of his way. Mm. Like busiest man ever. Yeah. He'll go out of his way to like go skate, skate a slappy curb with kids that he, you know supports or leaves wheels yeah. somewhere for somebody to find yeah, like, yeah. he is it the seems most, like he's like, got his ear to the ground still with current skating you know oh, he's, he's not like he's got his ear to the ground with like music mm. like everything like yeah. you're, you're walking in his office and he's listening to like what was that uh kendrick drake beef or whatever i don't know they not like us i don't know they, they know that beef that, thing yeah. i don't fucking follow that yeah. shit. but he knew everything like he yeah, knew about he, it and was listening like, to it and I was like, dude, what the fuck? I don't even know. He's this a proper guy skate is. nerd, is it? You know. Yeah, and he, he really follows like the world. Yeah. Yeah, he seems like, you know, you get older in skating, whatever jobs you do, you can sit in an office and kind of lose sight of what's going on on the ground. Yeah, you can just be but like he seems you know, to be like mm. in there still. And that's oh, why yeah, he's, he's super he's, current. He's a yeah. relevant dude. Yeah, super relevant, sick. super current. He's um a uh, top dude, but yeah, the deluxe crew are um some of the best people to like be involved with. Yeah, it's, it's like actual skateboarders there's no like oh we've got to get the numbers up like yeah. the accountant skates like you yeah. don't give a fuck like yeah and you know he's got to survive the business but like there's no like they understand the nike sb we got to kick off five riders yeah. you know he's like oh that guy's not skating in a few years like, maybe we should give him a board <laughs> like yeah because yeah, i don't know they help him in some way because they're skaters and not all just business minded they know that it goes up and down they exactly. know that it's going to go slow and then it's going to go quick and it's yeah like, yeah you know what I mean? Yeah, and then you know, uh, they don't, I've never seen him really kick anyone off either. Like he, it seems like you ride you're it. You're down for life. Yeah, and yeah, then and then life. you're you're part of that family that you, you basically always can get stuff and. Yeah, you just you know they're always gonna know you and I've met yeah. him. I don't know. Yeah, if even when I stop skating, I think not that I ever will. Hopefully, but but that's still yeah. I think I still have it. a family there to be yeah. like. Mm. You know, I wouldn't take the piss and rinse some bun just be nice to be like hey guys you know, I'm, like, I'm back yeah can i have a cruiser or something like i'll come visit you i don't know they seem yeah. like wholesome as dudes so. yeah i mean i mean you know i don't know anyone there but you get that vibe from it as an outsider that it's yeah yeah the shit seems approachable yeah seems like an approachable place yeah and then like also like the kids in uh san francisco um especially the like uh younger sicker dudes like some of the emb kids that's gonna yeah. the island and stuff they can come through the locks anytime they want and they're not on the brands, but they're like, oh, his board, his wheels, new truck. Yeah. And so these kids aren't they spending must be money on so much product. Yeah. But then these kids are saving money on buying the stuff, which yeah. is, you know, I guess counteractive for the skate shops in the area, but they still sell product too. Well, they're still selling through it. Yeah, so exactly. Just, yeah. So it becomes like full circle and everyone there is like, Jim makes sure no, you know, yeah. you're not buying stuff basically. <laughs> like you can go buy food instead or yeah. like the train or like you can yeah. go skate. Yeah, I think, super rad, isn't it? I think there's one person I imagine that they've had a hard time with and kicking off, and it's probably Andy Roy. You know, for all like the, oh, the right, crazy yeah. shit with Andy Roy. and um, Yeah, I don't know too much about that. I've met Andy a few times, actually. Yeah. yeah he's really, really nice dude. One of the nicest. Uh, I mean, I don't know when he was fired up, but I met yeah, him after he was fired up. With his new teeth. Uh, yeah, oh, well, just dude? before we got him, I met him. Anyways. Is that what he sounds like? Sap, dude. Yeah, he's like, he's like, 
it's like right in the back. It's yeah. like Ross, nasally. It's, it's like, yeah, it's like it's been, <laughs> it's, I can't do it. He's, he's been good like guy though. gargling gravel or something, isn't it? And um, he's the first dude to be like, you know, there's a parent with a kid and the kid's struggling and Andy's skating. Yeah. And it looks insane. He's like, he's I like, know what to do. Yeah, he'll be like, yeah, you got to do this. And the kid's like, really? So they end up like holding this by real girl's hand, like helping her, genuinely helping this kid drop yeah. in, like super cares. And then like, you just take him back. We're like, that's Andy Roy. Teaching kids to drop in. Okay. One of the gnarliest like, dudes. Yeah. Gnarliest He's got a love dude. for skating. Yeah, you know, he just like... loves it. Like when I met him, I was like, I bet he can get crazy, but he's actually like really, really nice yeah. guy. He seems like he's changed it. Like, yeah, he never means like harm. I think he just likes having a lot of fun. I don't know. Yeah. He never did anything to me. We just hung out a few times. Yeah. Like, he was just there, you know. Has yeah, there yeah. been like many moments with going out to the States where you're suddenly, um, you clock who you're around and like hanging out with and you're like, oh shit. And does it ever get in your mind? Like kind of uh, similar to what Toby said, where you kind of look around and you're like, look who I'm with. Yeah, I know they're your mates, but they're the best skateboarders. Times. Yeah, ever. there's like moments where you're like, um, I mean, like Chris Hazamon was the one. Um, going on trips with Grant Taylor for the first time. Fucking yeah. it's got me unreal. That was like pretty crazy <coughs> and like really nerve wracking, but he's a top notch guy. And then his, his footage like, is insane, but is he definitely one of those as well where the footage doesn't do justice to just how, you know, watching him on an average session? Yeah, it's like be insane. if you just see the front side air and the ball and the slash, you, you didn't know that like he just dropped in blindfolded first go and did it and then wouldn't yeah. didn't do it again because he landed it. You, you, you like, kind of get that vibe. I've seen it in that, Copenhagen. Like, it, he's so it was insane. Like, naturally good at that yeah. stuff. Fuck, actually last year on my birthday, we were in Poland. We went to this sick bowl and it was on my birthday so I didn't skate, but he just did like a no i wouldn't say a demo i mean he was filming but like i swear to god like mm. an hour's demo with the stale fish the boneless the like front side grind around the corner the wrong way yeah yeah just like damn this is the, i guess see the grant show right now yeah yeah he's because it can right. happen and not happen like it's up to yeah i don't know it's one yeah, of them skaters i've met that he'll drop in and either just do it or be like oh, i'm off the yeah you know yeah he's unreal man to see him skate in person again would be insane yeah he's really good i'm really trying to think of like somebody who i met that i was like damn man, would you when i first seen i shot skate in real life it was like i, I crown him to this day as one of the best skateboarders ever yeah. it was like park street bowl stairs he, he just did everything and he did it so good he's yeah. like more, he's like talented at everything he's got really good trick selection and as he's well, really he? nice as he well he does all he the was, tricks yeah. that everybody wishes they could do all the time yeah, he's, he's really, dude. um, yeah, driven and like he's a really nice dude. Like he can, yeah, skate everything. Like you say, yeah, yeah. I've seen him like, I don't know. Ash is one of my favorite skaters, and I think one of the best in the world because of how quickly he can like realize what's going wrong. Like mm -hmm. he'll try a trick, and he'd be like, "Damn, got no one near that." Like, kind of a little bit stoked inside. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I shot this human, and yeah. then the next guy he's got to ever go. Yeah. Like he's so good at finding what like oh i did it that way it's got to do it this way mm -hmm. and so then and by the end of 10 tries he's doing it every go and you're like damn dude it insane. takes me 10 tries to get it right <laughs> look like, you know two tries times. and then you gotta you know what I mean? yeah, yeah that's just he's one of them skaters i've talent. seen and been like wow that's so fucking impressive like he's like yeah. i've never done that before I'm like you were flipping into it every go like what the fuck are you what do you mean <laughs> yeah that's insane yeah he's, he's really good to skate with um, Jamie Foy, nicest fucking dude. Mm -hmm. um, watching him skate in real life is like, in, so insane. Um, his skill and like his belief in knowing, like he knows how to bail a nose grind or do a nose grind. So when he gets to the rail, why wouldn't he like, just treat it like a nose grind? Mm -hmm. And watching not, him not have intimidated this- intimidated by the size of the rail. No, because I'll oh, just jump off a nose grind. Yeah. He's like, I know how to jump up and I was like, I know how to ollie in. I know what's know gonna to happen if I get it wrong. Fucking and so he has this weird easy. confidence. When I seen this first time in real life, I was like, actually he's right. Yeah. I can ollie that high and I can jump off and I can do this. And if mm -hmm. I just don't hesitate or like worry and you'll treat, be fine. You'll be fine. You just trust yourself, like know what you know, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's a fucking beast, isn't he? Yeah, he's a beast, man. Yeah, I've skated with Jamie a few times. Huge fan. She's a big, big. Shout out Jamie Foy. Come on the show. Big up Jamie Foy. Yeah, okay. Big up Jamie. <clears throat> um, what were we talking about before piss break? I think we just Did kind I just of give finished. Did reveal between, uh, behind the magician's robe there that we have a piss break? No, I think and this is edited. Oh, okay. I think we kind of just got to the end of like Deluxe being the... The oh, yeah, shit. Deluxe, the, the shit. Yeah, the shit. fucking the uh, best in the world. You, who else you on now? You're you, Ace, right? Ace, yeah, yeah. Joe Tashi. Ace, um, Spitfire. Yeah, yeah Ace, Spitfire. Um, Converse, Volcom. Yeah, Converse, big up to Converse. Usain Bolts. Um, Was that a thing? Uh, I don't know. Is that, no, it was a thing a while ago. I don't know. I've, I've been on many bulk companies throughout yeah. the years. It's like the easy. Uh, I just, I don't know. I feel bad because I just say yeah, and then I don't know. And then you realize it never it's, happened, just, and it's it, just another inch bolt. <laughs> yeah, and then like I don't know, the, the company factory. falls apart or like it doesn't work, <clears> and then somebody else is like, yeah, you want to ride for bolts? So I'll be like, yeah, sure. Well, I'm starting to make baghead rails. So if you ever want to rails, if, if you ever want to okay. use, if you ever want a rail hook up. I'll get your name on it and everything. Shit, I need to get my chain wallet out and cut off jeans That's and then it. I'm in. That's it. Um, your beanie peaked beanie cap. Yeah, peaked beanie cap. That'd just go crazy, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The, I ride for, uh, I guess, maybe Bolts right now. Yeah, Joe Gavin. Yeah, big Joe, up Joe Gavin. Gavin. Yeah, big Fucking up Joe. Great. Manchester skate scene. Started the DIY there, actually. I'd yeah. like to say that. Yeah. Yeah, big up it, Joe. Support it, it, the DIY. Goose side DIY, right? Joe, the DIY. The DIY. The, the DIY. The DIY. Yeah. Yeah. Joe is one of the people that we get requested on air. So All the time. So many times. Yeah, I'm going to tell him I came and, yeah, and hopefully I can help guys. Like, I don't know, maybe he wants to come on. Who knows? But I'm going to try. <laughs> if he comes on, fucking hell, we'll call it the Brain Drain Show with Joe Gavin. Bracket thanks to Harry. I, like, I can understand like some people have reservations because of this. Yeah, yeah he's, I, don't, I don't think he's that kind of guy. He seems yeah. pretty quiet. He's a pretty quiet dude. Let's the skate and do the talking. Yeah, he's, he's definitely incredible. more like that kind of dude, you know. I So I messaged him uh, two weeks ago. I was like, how many video parts you had? And he said around 15. Now, I went through like scene he's videos, videos, online time. videos, and I counted close to 20. But yeah, I, he must I, have more. I should take his word at 15, but I think it's over 20. And if that's the case... It's got to be one of the U he's got to be the UK skater with one of the most video parts. Maybe Frank Stevens. He's got to be really well. close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's I mean he's still skating um loads now. I mean he's got his two kids. Um Yeah. Uh with his uh I'm not sure if they're married but with Alice and then uh he still skates. Yeah, he's skating loads. He was there last Thursday filming as well. Yeah. We might as well blend this in with the growing up with legends like Tony Silver. Yeah, Tony uh, Silver. Tony yeah. Joe grove belvedere yeah what was it like growing up with those guys kendrick as well and seeing where they are now and what they're doing um it was crazy when i first met them when i first like started coming to manchester like at 18 i'd never seen like skaters that good mm. yeah I, I, you know i was on the telly and stuff but like mm. i'd never met anyone who was like that driven or like even in ashford people just wouldn't wear skate clothes because they had no money yeah so like when we came to manchester there was like people in like indie shirts and like Mm -hmm. they had the brands and i was like whoa that's a that's a fucking thing like did, did the they brand. kind of take you in quite effortlessly as yeah, well yeah a little bit effortlessly. eddie well belvedere for seen. sure would just like razz around the city and be like follow me in we just like had to scare with him he's still doing that now still... i was a fan of ben grove before i met him actually through um uk vms his yeah. day in the life yeah and there's that one scene where he falls I over some of that did you yeah. did did you film the bit where he falls over it and he goes it's just the day man it's just a day. I can't remember. <laughs> I, I can't remember, but there was. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. Was and he like frontside flips times. an oil drum out of a pallet <laughs> kicker, snaps his nose, bends it over his knee, and then lands, lands it. it. And I was like, "That's the sickest shit." My, I thought it was the I'm best trying to think shit. back to when we filmed that. I remember he didn't he like at the house didn't he like gap over to backlip down the rail or something with like a lock in. Probably. I can't, yeah. I, doing I, I can't remember, respect. but my my early stories of Ben Grove. Um, he was managing a band for a while. I forgot who yeah. it was. I can't but I seen him in Leicester and I didn't dare talk to him. But I just went, Ben Grove. And he was just like, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> and then the second time when I moved to Sheffield, I was like, yep, I'm living with Timmy. And yeah. he must have already knew where Timmy lived. Like one day, knock at the door, I open it and it's Grove. And he, and he just goes, get out of the way, I need piss. And he just storms in. And then he's like, skating then or what? And then he like opened a bottle of vinegar and sipped a bit of vinegar. And then we went skating and I was just mates with Grove. Wow. And he'd just drive, pick me up, take me to these spots. He knew what he wanted to do. 
Nine times out of yeah, ten, you'd do it. I think that was probably like the influence and of hanging around with McGee as well, like that time. Yeah, that and time was the McGee. But I had so really many laughs with that guy. Like seeing Grove take like a little hit of weed and then get them the craziest munchies you've ever seen, like <laughs> empty in his cupboards. I remember being at just like it was insane. I remember being at Dev Green. With... You gotta have some Grove stories, under you? Uh, with... Not too many. I didn't really hang out with him like that. Yeah, because he's a bit older, you know, and partying and stuff. And yeah. I was quite young at the time, innocent, but. So yeah, Grove like. Were you taken under like Belvedere's wing and seeing them like and what they were doing at the time, like the videos and tours that they Gavin. were going on, like the sidewalk and pour it yeah. era of skateboarding then was um, really good and they were leading uh, in it. So like, you know, just seeing that and having that around me at the time really helped, I think, with mm. skating. And I guess that's why I would just like, as soon as I got my paycheck, I'd be like, mega bus <laughs> and just yeah. like book time off work Straight. and go up. And, um, yeah, no, they're cool. It's cool to see Kendrick doing Blue Flowers now. Yeah. Um, and sponsoring, like, a bunch of people around the world, but mostly in Manchester. So, like, you know, it's amazing for the Manchester skate scene to have. Yeah, definitely. Um, ben uh, is killing it. He's got his house in Newquay, and Belvedere's got the skate park in Plymouth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everyone kind of went their separate ways a little bit, but... But they're all doing They're all well, doing still, you know? like skate stuff all doing well or, yeah. or stuff like this but it was incredible to have them around me like watching eddie belvedere skate at the time was like he's still so good isn't he an hour. he's getting better yeah, as yeah. well he's, he's like getting one of those better dudes. yeah he's like ronnie callow like we say he's like gets better like a fine time. wine there's actually yeah. a moment um before black sheep before any of this i was in ashford and there was an ez signing at the sprite urban games in london yeah yeah with um, ronnie callow rodney clark Tim Flynn, Flynn Trotman and like Churchill skated at the time. Mm. Big um, up all those dudes. Yeah, big up all them dudes. They uh, were skating the comp and I, f I went for the sign. I thought Costin, I met Costin and Penny and R R Crank. I was like, ah, oh, I can sign it. It's like, oh. I'm still like that now if I see him. <laughs> I kind of know him now. So it's like fucking weird. Yeah. Because like, yeah, I don't know. That's a separate story. But um, I met El uh I watched Eddie skate and I didn't know who Eddie was. And it was just this guy with long black hair was top off. Was like, Ugh. And he looked well scary. <laughs> and I, he nolly back heeled, back lipped, nolly back heel, back lipped down the shotgun rail at yeah. the Sprite Urban Games, the fakie. And I was so impressed. I went up to him with like one of them flyers they hand out and shit. Mm -hmm. Just like, sign this. Like, proper neaky kid. Yeah. And he did. And he wrote Eddie Belvedere with it, Anarchy sign. Fucking Rad, sis, and uh, I had it for fucking That's years, so good. years on my wall, and then later on I ended up being on the team with him through like two yeah. distribution. Did you bring up the story to him, or did you better then? Did you hand him the flyer when you like met him properly? I like, didn't yeah. have it anymore when I oh. fully. I looked for it. I really did look Imagine for it. Imagine handing it back to him. Yeah, I've been like, just Yo. be like, here you go, mate. I've, I've signed this for you and given it back. To you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would have been so sick. Well, like super small world, but yeah. Imagine now, like it. Uh, you know you meet costing and stuff it's like mm. yeah of course you might blah, blah. i met him in copenhagen um and i was like with the i don't want to say this about skateboarding but i guess like the cooler crew mm -hmm. it's the i don't know you guys been to copenhagen you know what it can be like yeah they, well they exist they exist know? there and is tears in skateboarding of course as much yeah. as you don't want to admit it we don't want to admit it but there is some sort of tears i was lucky enough to be in this top tier of groups of friends for yeah. this film and he's like well, yeah we're gonna go meet costin and everything this kid's gonna be there and stuff and uh i was super nervous like everyone's talking it's raining we're under an umbrella like kind of don't know what to say dude no like, people you... are trying to buy uh micheladas and shit and i'm <laughs> just like oh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> hanging out like we're not skating as copenhagen trying not to be like too hung over and uh, i didn't know what to say and he was sat down and he was just like harry and like he put his hand across the table to me and i was just right. like fuck this is costin did you say and i was like eric <laughs> like yeah i don't know i didn't know it's just like yeah yeah sick he it's, it's surreal it's like it's, it was really it's surreal because i was like he's not gonna know who i am he's just gonna be like he's this weirdo that shit but, seems to happen in copenhagen like i mentioned in an earlier one like um i think when in 2019 and like a bunch of the creature dudes were stood around and like sam hits and those guys they were like baghead and yeah, I was yeah. like, it just blew my mind. Skateboarding and then it, is really a smaller world than you think. Yeah, and then I went for a piss and 
in a bush and Alex Olsen and Redder was stood on the other side. Yeah. It might, <laughs> might have gone through a little bit. It's the night that there was the riot. There oh the, God, that one. I think, was Pete, there. I think Pete from Bristol snapped an emblem off a police car and yeah. there was the polar premiere. Um, if it were the same one we went to, there was like a polar video and there was a dude on like a big metal green like container and people were pelting him with beer cans. It was pissing it down. Beeble was there, his top off. It was weird. It was just- <laughs> It was a... weird. I just remember it being like in an alleyway and people kind of skating. And then the, I seen the police gear. Turn police just, just all like, turned yeah, nope. up. Yeah. Left a left. Was... I was like, run. <laughs> and there was an anti-hero, the fucking, what was that video that they called? The body corporate. The oh thing. yeah. The so we might've been at the same one. That's when I first met Div and he was asleep in a mud ditch. And I was like, <laughs> I know who that is. No, no, that's different. That's like, yeah, amazing. But yeah, it's insane that Costin was like, I wonder, yeah. where did he know you from? Did he ever come up? Like, no, no, I mean, I didn't have a chance to speak about I mean, it. there's, there's, what I was going to say, there's probably an element there of, let me try and word this properly, like within skating, even the top pros are still into skateboarding. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, they keep course. their eyes on it, it so they'll, and... they'll see who's coming up and he's probably like, oh, that's Harry. You yeah, know. I was super. I wonder if he's ever watched my part or anything. I don't know, but mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. I was taken back anyway. That's probably yeah, that's the right. most mind blowing yeah. one I've had. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that'd be the same for anyone if Costin put their hand out and. Said that your was name. the thing. Yeah, is he broke the ice because yeah. I was like, just like, oh, I don't know what to fucking say. Like, shook some people's hands and stuff, or waiting for people to finish talking or whatever. I don't want to interrupt anyone. And then yeah, he did it, and I was like, fuck. Oh, Yo, Eric, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sick. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want a Michelada? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What's that? <laughs> but I like yeah, it. I didn't know what it was. It's horrible. It's beer and uh, it's mountain juice and Tabasco. Oh. Horrible. I'm not mm. a fan. Yeah, no, fuck that. We should probably let the listeners know about the Patreon that we're starting. Do you want to give them some information about that? Yes, I will. So from as little as £2 a month, you can become a Patreon member and get access to uncensored, uncut episodes, mm. behind-the-scenes shiz, Bonus OG episodes. What does that mean, Ford? Like the episodes that we used to do where it was just me and Toby doing reviews, fan mail, and anything else in between. And Toby's favorite, Stinker of the Week. Stinker of the Week is back, but only on Patreon episodes. Mm -hmm. You will also get outtakes, early access to new merch when it launches, mm -hmm. general skate nerdery, and much, 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 much more. <laughs> Make sure you check out all the information in the description, follow the links, make sure you subscribe, become a member, and enjoy the rest of the episode. Should we, can we go back to Turning Pro? Should we do that bit next? I or just wanted to do. I just wanted to progress? ask this, yeah, because obviously right, I had that. a part in like uh, In Progress and Albion as well, but specifically In Progress and then. I actually didn't have a part in Albion, I just had a little bit on the Friends. All right, well, mm. fuck me. No, no, that's all right, everyone does think that though, because <laughs> yeah. I opened the Friends section. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's where... All right, anyway. Go on. So you had a part in progress. Oh, yeah. And you do the 50-50 down the rail in Sheffield. That was also a cover, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. Did, yeah. did um, how's it filming for that? Because that in progress video is so good. And there's also the bonus disc. Yeah. Fuck and you have a part that. of the bonus disc. Yeah, I forgot about that. Was that well. mainly did... filming with Kev? And did you help edit uh -huh. your part? Because I know they're quite brutal with throwaway stuff. Look at the blueprint <laughs> lost and found. It's a whole separate video. Yeah, I guess um, so the sidewalk video was mostly like Kevin Parrott and Ryan Gray. Yeah, and um, so I think McGee wasn't really filming. No, anything. not then. But how did that come about <clears throat> and filming for that and all the footage you had in two parts? And um, just through like because this you know the skateboarding community is like a little bit different right now. I would mm -hmm. say I think a lot of the towns and cities in England now are full of skaters, but not filmers or people shooting or or driving the scene everyone's just skating right now it's like a big yeah. difference we say and it's because of social media so everyone seems connected you don't actually need to go yeah and then anymore. you're not actually doing anything like i know what you've been up to a week just because of instagram they're, they're like every city there's like groups of skaters that probably don't interact that much with each oh other. there's loads Even Whereas in back Manchester, in the day yeah. it would be like if there was a skater within 50 mile radius you, you knew who they were and you yeah. were well, just that as well and different. just also like driven skaters ones that you know there's ones that just go to the park and home mm. there's ones that are willing to like <clears throat> go to london on the weekend and, you know yeah. film with a stranger you would never yeah. met before to like have an Jiri, opportunity for example that dude yeah kills it and he's driven and he's driven and kills it and um so i feel like uh skateboarding as a whole right now like that is a you know a bit tight and at the time 
I met Ryan yeah. because the skate scene was different. You know, we had the distribution and, you know, Sidewalk Magazine was based up north with Ben Powell. And so then, you know, they, everyone would be going through Leeds, Manchester, Leeds, Manchester. Yeah, and they yeah, knew yeah. all the skaters. And I yeah. ended up meeting him through uh, just going to Manchester loads. And he, mm -hmm. we skated together with Eddie and stuff. And he, yeah, just offered me a, um, a part, basically. He's like, let's just start filming. Oh, you're so gonna we, stop coming to Manchester yeah. and you're gonna come to Wakefield. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna stay in Ben so Paris house. So with Ben a lot. He's well, a funny fucker as well. Yeah, Ben it? and Rai were mostly for in progress. It was mostly staying at Rai's house um, for most of it. Maybe some footage in London, but he would, um, yeah, put me up and like just yeah drive me around uh, for however long I stayed, and we would just try and film whatever we could. Mm. And I'd eat Sainsbury's one pound like cardboard pizzas and shit and yeah just skate, make skate. it work yeah make it work because you don't in skateboarding right now there's not a lot of that happening it seems like go skating and land your trick that's great yeah. but like some parts of skating aren't about that some parts of yeah. skating are about like yeah the adventure like going out and and like doing it slightly different like i mean i don't know when was the last fucking street park you seen from like something on social media that wasn't a production like mm -hmm. where's the local scene video with the fucking dvd mm -hmm. release or whatever you know what i mean there's like less of that so at the time i met them and they were dr driving me and yeah. i could see the difference too between like ashford and like london and manchester i could see like you know in ashford it's like kind of like how it is today there wasn't many people willing to like go out and do that stuff mm -hmm. and it's like that's a yeah. whole part of skateboarding yeah and then also for the filmer too like because I thought, think about this all the time. Like Ryan didn't really skate when we went skate. We just would like hang he out. He skated a bit, but like it's a lot film. of standing around being a film rack. And yeah, you, you'll know. Like, like you've got to put in the work you're too. You're at spots like, but now with being a filmer as well, it's like because you've got your phone. Well, um, when I was in the states, I was like filming on the camera, then on the phone. And so yeah. I said to me like, "Do you get burnt out?" And I was like, "No, I love to do it. I get burnt out standing around, but the, I think filmers are just doomed to kind of wait." Yeah, you, you guys kind of, oh, yeah, like okay. Reese the photographer can like literally lay in a puddle like this for four yeah. hours while she's trying to trick. Yeah, like, yeah, he's I'm a dedicate. so happy, like, yeah. you know, there's not many people willing to like do like I think, I, right I think there's definitely a change in like people, oh, fucking hell, I'm going to sound like such a dick. But like people don't seem to have that drive anymore. I think no. it's social that, media. Or, or that want yeah, because the, the gratification is really quick. And yeah. like with social media, you can be like, oh yeah, I've seen something cool, cool. I'll just go do something cool. I feel cool. Like, yeah, you know, I'm where... definitely seeing a lack of people wanting to film full parts because I still m like making full length videos. And I've got my mates that do it, but I've kind of accepted the fact that like in like five, 10 years, the dudes that I'm filming that want to film full parts they're going to be too busy or mm. have families or jobs or be too yeah, old yeah. to do it. So yeah, yeah. But I do think it's a social media thing. You, I think it, like, it, it could only be that really, couldn't it? Mm. Like, yeah. And then I, you know, I always learned like, um, from my own personal experience and feelings, like, um, you know, most of the time when you're like fucking skating in a shitty car park as a kid, yeah. feeling alone and like, nobody's there. And like, Oh, those people walk past. I'm like, dickhead, grow <laughs> up, yeah, you know, but now like, there's none of that. You know, you don't feel like you're doing anything right at the time. Mm -hmm. But then, like, later on, it it works out because you're probably going to be the guy he's watching if you, like, did it right and got somewhere. And then mm -hmm. you're like, you're not that dickhead anymore. But, like... I guess it, it boils down to, like, having that, like, the bug of skateboarding. Because you can, you know, we see it quite a lot with kids who come for lessons and stuff. And they will only skate when they come to a lesson. That's mental. You, you, yeah. If you're a, if you want to get into skating, you've got to have that almost like the drive to do it all the time. Yeah, like a, yeah, you like want to skate. Yeah. We'll go skating, and if it looks like it's gonna rain, you're still gonna try and go skating. Yeah. You're still gonna risk it because you think it might dry up. Yeah. And there's so many people don't have that anymore, and that's probably is that the internet? Is that just? I don't, I don't know, know what that is. I think that's just like a whole bunch of influx of new skaters, and maybe it's a different. generation thing. So I think yeah. it's like, probably a mixture of a few things. Because like you're really still common. like a dude that will want to film a part. So's Joe. So yeah, Fury. yeah. Maybe it's like just a generation gap. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very odd and there's a lot of skateboarders right now too and it's like i don't know i guess they maybe feel like it, they're not going to get seen or mm -hmm. i think i remember skateboarding is super fucking small yeah like, yeah it still is i like, know it's big now but it's still it's still kind of, small yeah. you know you can still yeah. go to like copenhagen and bump into pros or see people and everyone knows each other like yeah we were saying this on a previous episode it's i feel like 
you can run into someone say like a favorite pro or whatnot and if you run into them more than enough times then you're on a session with them yeah yeah, be like, yeah i know mate. that dude i see that, it, i seen that dude before and it's like no matter how big they are obviously you got like we said you're unreachable ones maybe like hawk or those people yeah <laughs> but you know what i mean like you run into these yeah, people is, enough times it, and it then is a funny kind of thing skateboarding you be, that you can do that yeah you i mean go, I, you, you could go on holiday to like i don't know to, to venice and skate the curbs and you probably bump into somebody you know as a world famous skater yeah, yeah. And, and then you'd be skating with yeah, them. I mean, session, what yeah. other sports can you do that like, I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. You can't be. go play tennis at that's the private saying. club and or football, yeah. you know, you know, laugh in a doll, fucking whack that's at the tennis That's what I mean. You know, you yeah, that's you, crazy. You can't really do that. So. that. That probably gets lost on social media as well because you don't see kids like making travels out to spots. No, you don't, Whereas man. the pros are doing that. Yeah. But, that, but that's kind of how I felt like little nerd moment for me when I first skated with you. So I was like, fucking hell, it's Harry Lintel. I've watched oh, your I'm stuff for years. Yeah, I'm just a dude. Oh, okay. I, don't, I don't matter. I don't care. I'm just but, a dude. <laughs> but then, but then that's what I mean. But then we just went like skating. Me, you, Seb. Yeah, yeah. And we sick. just had fun. Like, and I was just like sick. Know. And with Harry. Yeah, you can like you meet skaters, and you can just tell they're like, I don't know, skaters. I've never really met like too many lazy skaters or bad ones or like. But there are like going back to like coming we back into the thing. But yeah, there's a bunch of skaters out there that should just you know go skate and yeah. shut up and go skate. Shut up, go yeah. skate. People will see it. You'll yeah. inspire people. That will just come naturally because people will see you skating. Yeah. Like, I think without without like arse licking too much, like I think you're a good example of like you had a bit of money, you made it work, and now you're skating for some of the best brands in skateboarding. Yeah, because I mean, you, I'm you never made gonna... that fifty pounds work. Yeah, I that's what I did, dude. <laughs> yeah. I fucking did. No, I live comfortably now. Um, you know, in such words, skateboarding's yeah, very small uh, window of like um, good money or or anything. You have to be really smart with it. All. Well, it's, de it's deserved because you've been at it for a fucking long time. Ever yeah, since I've I'm skated, stoked. I've known of you as a skateboarder. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really stoked. I I never for like I always <laughs> think like fuck, how did I get there? What what did I do? Like, did I do? Because I never learned any specific good trick or like do the hammer or like mm. I don't know. I just more hang hard out. work and determination, and, and people yeah. recognize that exactly what you're saying. Yeah, and then it do, translates, like, and people yeah. will see it, and yeah. then suddenly it will just keep going. And Not like, just see it, like fucking the best real skateboards. I mean, they saw it, and and then there's other skaters out there also too that I see sometimes that really, 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 really want it, and they don't know what it really entails, and so then like when they do after like, you know, they've only got 50 quid and somebody's bought them a flight to Spain but they ain't got no money to eat but they can't tell anyone because like, of yeah. like social aspects of skating hmm. and you turn up and then you like, you blew it or you didn't say anything or you didn't like, you know, it's all, it's completely different, you know? Like someone who told me when I was 18, like sponsor skating, I would have to be getting a mega bus to Wakey for three <laughs> years, sleeping on the floor on a sleeping bag. Yeah. I would have been like, nah, really? Big up Wakefield, you know but it was sick, and yeah, I loved it. Saying. I loved every part but that, of it. That was yeah. part of the process. Yeah, and you know, to just get you where skate. you are now, like you go out with your film up, go fucking do street. Don't fucking tell anyone what you're doing. Just get it done. And fucking make a pot, dude. Mm. Go skate. You know and what? You're that's not fucking. It, that is, that's why. And when it comes out, or however it comes <clears> out, because <throat> so much social media these days, I'm sure it will go somewhere. Somebody will say, people will then go, that guy's sick. Yeah. You know, and suddenly. It starts going and and then you just gotta keep going like that. You know what skaters I absolutely love? Me? Aside from you. Who? The ones that you meet that are so fucking good and they could have it, but they don't care about it. Yeah. Like your yeah. DIY part builders, like some fucking yeah. 40 year old dude that's been sick for 30 years and he's been offered it and he's like, nah. Yeah. And yeah. he just does it because it's skateboarding. He, he just loves it. Yeah. He's just still goes. That's, that's sick. There's this one guy in uh, Manchester. I'm really sorry, dude. I don't can't remember your name we've only met twice properly this is all the dude silver hair we'll know who i'm on about he's sick he's like front boarding the rail a lot mm -hmm. um he's got like silver hair he's like i don't know i don't know how old he is but he lives in now from uh canada i don't know but he's like that every day skating. Yeah. and he's getting there more than uh some of the kids and i'm like yeah you know, he's not doing the best fucking tricks, but I'd rather fucking tap my board for him than like, mm. I don't know, you know? I know what you mean. It's really difficult because mm. like, I love skateboarding and like, I don't care what you do as a skateboarder or how you do it. But as long as you like skating, like trying, I don't yeah. know, that's like the most important bit. You yeah, because it's fucking hard. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking to, hard. You need to fucking try and yeah. it's hard work. It's not like the quick payoff, is it? Like nah. you have to... 
No. Eat, you have to eat shit. <laughs> no, no, you do. You do have to eat shit. So, to, uh, this, this I know you've back. been dying Yeah, I just want questions. to talk about like when you turn pro for real. Okay. Um, had that been spoken about before or like was it what was the run surprise? up? Yeah, um, what was the lead up to that? I guess uh, when I first because you, you San said, Francisco. Because you sorry. Because mm -hmm. you said about the board shapes and the wheelbase, and then your board came out on that shape. Did they um, kind of be like, "Here's a board for you to try"? Or? No, no, not at all. Um, they're really good with that kind of secrecy stuff. Or some people they tell based on everyone's situation, but uh, they didn't tell me. And when I first met Jim at Deluxe, he sat me down in his office, which is super intimidating. And he's like, "Well, what what do you want?" <laughs> I was like. Were you like, what do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, I I know, like, can I have some wheels? Um, and then he's like, no, what do you want? Like, out of this whole thing. And I was like, I don't know. Fuck, like, to be good enough to go, like, go pro one day and, and do you justice as well as me. Mm. Yeah. And, like, you know, I wouldn't want to go pro if, I, if you guys didn't think I could do Like, we should do it. Fucking good answer. And he was like, okay, sweet. Leave it with me. And, you know, years went by and stuff. And because how long was you on real for? Sorry, before you went pro, she were on. You've been I was on for a long time, like maybe uh, fuck, um, probably like since 2012, maybe mm -hmm. something like that. I don't know, but um, but yeah, yeah, they didn't tell me or anything. The board shape came from just like oh, Harry found which shape he likes, and it's mm -hmm. the blue eagle kind of so yeah, like rad. we'll just put stickers on the blue eagle and he can skate that did it is there like prototypes of board shapes floating around quite a lot within the team yeah loads i'd fucking love that yeah I'd there's imagine. a front office full of mad shit yeah like mm -hmm. mad That'd wheels be so rad and like... when people come past they'll be like hey go try out this new formula yeah just text me what you think of them and stuff and that's like... it they actually care that much to get the yeah, yeah they opinion. will. They'll purposely like give it out to a, a, somebody, the well, kid in the market, city market who skates research, a lot. Isn't and, it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Does it work? Um, but yeah, they didn't tell me. And during COVID, uh, it didn't happen before COVID. And I was like, fuck me. Like, uh, I left America just as COVID started. I had to leave. I had to rebook my flight because they're like, borders are closing. Yeah, and if I hadn't, I would have been a, an illegal alien in America <laughs> for two years. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So I don't know. It would have been a way different story. Maybe I'd be living in America right now. Who knows? I, I wonder got... what would have happened. Like, if yeah, if I had stayed, like, I couldn't like, get a flight. Like, can't, I can't leave. I'm. Yeah. Yeah. They, can't, they can't take it out on you for. Yeah, they'd have to yeah, house you or something. Yeah. You've got to be all right in California. Yeah, definitely. It's nice and sunny. Yeah. Just kick you out. Um, so how did the, the so that the COVID thing happened and I was like fuck I was just on this trip and I you know there was Patrick uh, Pramant getting on and yeah. Gage, Gage Boyle was there and and um, I was like the like uh, I guess the slightly higher up dude on the team I don't really know mm -hmm. but they were like yeah I think it's gonna happen kind of thing everyone's looking up to me at the time and then COVID happened and I was like fuck did you think that kind of that's maybe it. stopped it yeah like, I was just fucked like how am I fucking this is it it was done. So I started to learn the tattoo, like the painting yeah. and, and getting into tattooing, which is really fun. I mean, I'm not doing it full time or anything, but it's really fun to fuck up your mate's skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's well good. But uh, no, they've come out pretty good. But So I started to do that and I was like, it's fucking over. It's never going to happen. Yeah. And then we went on one trip after COVID to Germany. And it was like the most random deluxe trip. It was like me, Fana, Chris, uh, Chris Fana, Victor Pellegrin, Doobie, um, Mac uh, Shaft, the filmer, um, and Max Pack, and we were staying at his. And I was like, this is the most random trip. And on the trip, Mac was like, who do you want to come? And I was like, what the fuck, me? Why, why, why am I picking right? What? I don't know, get Don on the trip. Don's my friend. I like Don. And so then Don came, and uh, yeah, it just happened. They randomly were just like, yeah, we're gonna, nobody else came on the trip, so we have extra budget, so we're all going to Manchester. I was like, this is fucking weird. <laughs> Did you think at that point, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, like, I kind of... Something's like, a bit different here. Something's not right. And then uh, I kind of thought it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I did say to him before, uh, if it did ever happen, I was like, please don't um, use my gappy tooth. as <laughs> <So> my <I> fucking <laughs> oh, first graphic. Yeah, please don't yeah. do that. I'll cry. <clears throat> like, I'll be really upset that that's what people remember me by. And... Um, they didn't, but the fucking ad was. I remember the ad. The yeah. fucking ad was. Yeah. And I was yeah. Like, yeah, fair enough. I guess they pre-planned this. Yeah. But, 
That's funny. Yeah, they plan it like way in advance, dude. Yeah. Way, way. So I guess it was still happening. I just didn't know this. And you know, and then afterwards I spoke with um, Mac, the filmer, and he was like, yeah, we wanted to do it like a year before COVID. Yeah, then COVID and then, um, haunted it. It didn't work out. You, were, I was working on a Dash interview and they wanted to like tie in. Mm-hmm. to, the, And then obviously it didn't get finished and COVID happened and blah, 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 blah. blah. So it became like this whole yeah. waiting game. And then they... um. They went to Manchester and surprised you in yeah, in Black in Sheep. The Sheep. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they yeah. they got me to do a free mag review, which I was like, that's never fucking been done. <laughs> All right, kind of. It like, was an advert, right? In the yeah, I was like the front page or whatever. So I, you know, I opened it and then everyone ran down the stairs and stuff. Yeah, it was really surprising. Um, all the people they got there. Yeah, I was like, what was the busy. fuck? Like, I haven't seen you in like since Ashford. Yeah, that's like, Brad Lowe, isn't it? Crazy, like, they'd done all yeah. the research and like yeah. found everyone. And I was like, what that's the really fuck good. is this? Mm. It was yeah, it was a really good night. Really fun night. Um, super hungover the next day. Started to fish the next day. Went fishing. <laughs> gone fishing, bro. Like, goes for a gone fishing. <laughs> that leads on to the what's the biggest fish you've ever caught story. Oh, uh, story, question. That's a uh, question. That's what Toby asked. Um, yeah, I'm getting really into fishing because I live in the rainy city. And it rains mm. a lot and actually i didn't realize until i started fishing how incredible manchester is for fishing and that you can live in the city center yeah walk five minutes to the canal and catch a fish yeah like if you live don't live near water that's kind of hard yeah you know yeah. what i mean and it's really really cool but um in salford i got i mean i don't know how big it, the weight was but it was a fucking pike like this i was never held a fish at the time so i didn't i didn't hold it i got doobie to hold it these oh, things got sharp teeth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they can fucking take a finger off and shit. And so I was like, oh, you know. <laughs> and um, that was the first day fishing ever. And uh, I would go. This is really, really insane. Hang on, what? But you caught that fish the first day you went fishing? Yeah, yeah. It took all day. <laughs> and yeah. Doobie didn't get any fish either. And then like he got That's one, and then I got up. one, and then I got another one. And that was yeah. after the pro release. As and well. that was like the next day, like really late at night. Um, freeze and been there all day it was like gray day got this huge fish and he said to me you're never going to do this again you better take a fucking photo i was just like yeah whatever do this fuck fish so then i i would go fishing like when it rained or nobody was around or mm-hmm. blah, blah blah for like yeah a long time i mean snapped rods no line like proper bad fishing days yeah like and then i caught a fish finally this year and i looked at the time it took two years Fuck. Fucking hell. Yeah. Now I can catch fish every time I go. And it was the exact same fish. You were like, I've seen this fucker before. No, no. I got a pike the other day, my first pike by myself. And uh, yeah, fucking dragon of a thing. I was well scared. Well, so yeah. what, what did you Air, learn? The, Airdrop the photo to the Mac so we can put it on the screen. Yeah, I'll, 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 um, what um, I'll what was it that you changed to after all that time to start getting them every time? I'm really not sure, to be honest. I really it's don't not like know. some bait or... No, no, I don't use bait. I use um, lures, like fishing uh, lures. Like, they're like um, there's some spinners or jig mm. heads, and you just basically have to trick the fish um, into, into thinking, thinking it's, it's a they fish. Eat. Yeah. yeah, which yeah. is like way harder than bait fishing. Like everyone I see on the canals are all bait fishers, mm-hmm. and then they see me with my spinner, and they're like, "Damn, you get fish with that? Like it's hard." And I'm yeah. Like, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did get like well, oh, showing them photos and shit. <laughs> Yeah, that was it. Look at me, I'm like, oh, he's an old boy. I actually went yesterday was because it pissed it down in Manchester. Um, and my good friend Sebastian Batty, <laughs> Seb Batty. Oh, I'm gonna Seb. I'm gonna send this over as well. Seb's great. He, he got his me first yesterday. fish ever. <laughs> he messaged no me yesterday and he was like, "What time's Harry got to be there today?" I was like, "Seb, it's tomorrow." I know. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's because I looked at my phone. Um, uh. Like after midnight, and I was like, "Oh, it's the fucking twenty-eight yeah, seven. So tomorrow yeah. I have to get up, and it's the twenty-eight. Yeah, I've done that when I've um, been going to bed and I've been watching a film, and I've looked at the date, and then I've woke up and thought it was like a Tuesday when in fact it's a Monday at work, and it just bummed me out. I'm like, yes, it's already a Tuesday, but it's only a Monday. Yeah, so I'll I'll I get an extra that. fucking day. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I went with Seb oh, the other day. <laughs> yeah, he got his first fish. fish. I actually got no fish that day. We That's walked around in the fucking rain for four hours. I got nothing. Fucking big up Seb Batty as yeah. well. He's yeah, so dude, sick. Dude, he freaked out. He'd never done it before. And like within like 10 tries, he's like, fish. 
I was did like, you, what? Did you get that laugh? He's got a laugh and he was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, it was flailing around with the line. I was like, dude, respect the fish. She's like, puts it on the ground. I'm like, no, fucking uh, put it back. Get the hook out. Take your photo, put it back. Oh, the only time I've been fishing, went out sea fishing once down in Bournemouth. Obviously, we, we were banging on about it earlier, but being involved with Deluxe is fucking rad. Mm. But who's your all time favorite Deluxe rider? And what's the story about Could Julian Stranger giving you a song to use for a video part? Um, and have you met him? Yeah, I've met Julian Fucking loads. Yeah, Julian's really sick. Julian Stranger, um, man. Like, yeah, Julian's the nicest dude. Um, really cool, passionate skateboarder. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I asked Julian about that um, last time. He's like, yeah, I can't remember that. And he can't remember like suggesting it, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I think like Mac, um, I think he suggested it to Mac as like a video part, maybe not for me, but mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it ended up being my one. So. Um, it's an honor right there. Also yeah, I know. It's a, an honor. And I guess, I don't know, my favorite deluxe rider. That's a hard question. That's a hard That's question. The, the, every single one of the brands involved at deluxe. Austin Canfish. Yeah. Oh, okay, or Don Van der Linden. Okay. Yeah. Two anti-hero boys. Or, of course, I Shard or um, Patrick. There's so many, isn't there? Is fucking sick. Patrick it... Unreal. He just done pro. Patrick Promo. I just feel like, because every, every team there is like the top tier shit. That's what I'm saying. Every yes. single rider who's involved in the deluxe brand yeah. is fucking Andrew um, Wilson from mm -hmm. Crooked from yeah. New York. He's fucking top notch, dude. Yeah. I really like his skating. And that's the best thing about skateboarding. You can ride for all these brands with different skaters. And I'm sure if you ask them, their skateboarders would be different on the yeah. deluxe. So I don't, yeah. I don't want anyone to feel like I'm picking Hmm. like people or, or anything yeah. like that but yeah those those are probably my top favorites yeah nice have you ever been around julian and just been cruising with him and seeing the iconic julian skating down the street because everyone um, loves that shit yeah i've definitely been on tours with him in like uh copenhagen mm -hmm. uh when england did thrash vacation he was there yeah, i was on that and then um yeah just being in san francisco i see him in the office a lot mm -hmm. like going through the warehouse and then like yeah, I don't know. We hang out sometimes. He's come on sessions like with Mac and yeah. filming. I've not seen him like flying, but I've that's seen him sure. skating for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's an honor in itself just to see him rolling yeah. around, isn't it? One of the best to ever do it. Yeah, he's um dead funny. Yeah, he really like knows what he likes and he sticks with it. Yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah. I get the impression as an outsider that he sort of knows what he likes and he's sticking to that that's him he's genuine I yeah yeah that's it that's he does what he likes he doesn't really like he doesn't really watch get, the other stuff yeah. or get even like acknowledge the other stuff mm. it's this mm. i mean i guess he does i don't know i couldn't ask yeah. him too much he's just true to what he yeah likes. and he's like a really nice guy like i've never heard him say a bad word about anyone or like i don't know he's just really happy to be there doing it you know yeah. i showed him a turbo island in Bristol, mm -hmm. yeah, right. You guys are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Turbo Island. He was like, what the fuck was Turbo Island? <laughs> and then was, the anti-hero videos. Yeah, and Island. so we like we couldn't get to in the bar. There's too many of us, and I was like, we're going to Turbo Island. We could do anything we want there, <laughs> and we did. And it was like pretty nuts. Julian was trying to um, burn electric scooters, lime scooters, like in a huge fire. So sick that he still gets wild. Yeah, well. and we were like, fuck, he was so <laughs> down, but. As soon as everyone's seen the battery around the fire, everyone was like, like, no, dude, it's going to fucking kill us all. Like, we're going to blow up. And then he was like, yeah, burn the line. <laughs> it's like trying to find another one. Burn the fucking line. I pushed a wheelie bin on it. Like, no okay. way. Um, yeah. That was a good tour video. Nice. But uh, do you feel adequately adequately edu educated from that? Yeah, Shall we get, Should we get wrapped it yeah, up let's in case Harry up. wants to skate? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna Thanks say for I'm on, dude. Let's give it a round of applause. Thank you very much, Harry. Uh, uh, very nice thank you for having you. me. Absolutely smashed. Thank you for uh, my photo as well, guys. That was fucking incredible. Shout out Skin Phillips. Yeah, Big up, Skin. Skin.